Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Reign of Emrys here on Dork Tales. We're back after a brief hiatus. I uh, hope that you enjoyed all of the content that we were doing in the meanwhile and that you enjoyed Extra Life. And reminder that if you haven't participated in Extra Life, uh, the videos are available on Twitch right now. They'll be up on YouTube soon and you can donate to help sick kids at uh, Extra Life. Uh, dot org slash team slash dork tales and uh i think we still have a few members that are trying to achieve their goals and uh it helps the kids so please help us out so uh welcome back uh we just got back from uh, a little bit of a holiday uh, a little bit of extended holiday for some of us because our province flooded um and we got trapped on vacation which is the weird it's weird to say that because it sounds like a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. It was a it was an okay thing. I think we had. It was a very weird thing. We had pizza, weird. right? Like we were, it was not, a good we were pizza. also worried that the bridge to groceries was going to get washed out from a flooding river. So it almost did, but then it was fine the next day. It was weird. Life is weird. Climate change is a thing. Um, all right. So without further ado, let's start talking about uh, dungeons and or dragons. Uh, so hello everybody, I am your Dungeon Master Kelly. How you see in him pronouns, and I'm very excited to be here tonight because we are resuming the Reign of Emrys, our story of a Magitech empire in potential revolt as, uh, as it is nearing, you know, the end of the world. It's gonna be fine, it's fine, it's, it's fine. fine. How it's are fine. you? Everything's okay. Everything's awesome. Everything. Oh, I was just gonna say that. Damn you. Everything's everything's fine cool when, when you're... you're level nine. By the way, you guys at level nine. If you didn't already level yourselves up, then uh, I, I did. did. I'm pretty I did. sure. I, think I did. Oh, I didn't figure out what third level spells I want. Okay. I can now raise dead. Ooh. By the yeah. way. Oh, I can die more. Guess how many hit points yeah. I have at level nine. Sixty nine. Nice. Nice. Yes. But nice. I have at level eight. So I'm no longer nice. I pass pass it on. Yeah. <laughs> Passed on the nice. nice. I get brutal critical. Brutal. This is a critical. nice mug. Thank you for uh, for the gift, Robin. This was very nice. Oh, you're welcome. It's it is, pretty. It's very large That's and in charge. Very nice. Pretty. But yeah, I found out uh, when I was making coffee for game that it does not fit under the coffee maker precisely unless you <laughs> no. hold it. So if you heard me swear when I was coming back from the bathroom, that's because there was coffee everywhere. Oh no! Because I just went oh, no. boop and then like went off to the bathroom before game. So, um, so folks, we're gonna be starting in just a second. Uh, we're running a few minutes late tonight, and tonight's game is a little more hyper focused to get things done. Uh, but it will be good to go. But without further ado, I'm gonna pass this along and uh, have the cast introduce themselves. Uh, starting with, I'm gonna start with Cat tonight. Hey, Cat, what up? Hey everybody, my name's Katrina, and tonight I am playing our lovely, lovely little halfling artificer arterialist, Veritrix Soulstar, and read as crazy, um, mildly sociopathic, um, and her, <laughs> and her genuinely nice little companion, uh, her flying mechanical rabbit Crux. Crux has no emotions, so technically that makes him a sociopath too, doesn't it? It's true, but he at least... But he's he's polite? He's polite, and he'll try and go sit on people's heads to be cute, but he'll forget that he's made out of metal and actually weighs a lot and give people headaches. Are you feel... sure it's unintentional? Yeah. yeah. It might be intentional. I feel like He is a bunny. This is ro robot... Bunnies are... Assholes. Robot bunny apologist. You wouldn't. You wouldn't know. Yeah, I was about to say. I, I wouldn't know. It's not like I have to wash all my bedding because my bunny is an asshole. Oh. <laughs> all right. Speaking of assholes, let's talk about Talfrin. Wow, what an asshole. Well, um, Kate, Caitlin's nice. <laughs> Thanks. I'm Some, Caitlin. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, oh, I use uh, she/her pronouns, and uh, tonight I'll be playing the asshole. Talfrin, Pridery, <laughs> also the human barbarian of wild magic. <laughs> nice. He is uh, significantly lighter this episode than last episode, so we'll see uh, how that goes for him. He's lighter? Yeah. I'd say like a uh, seventh of his body weight lighter. We'll find out. Anyway, we'll find, we'll find out. out. We'll find out. That Figure might change. You never know. That might change. That might change in the next five minutes. Uh, let's pass this on to Amy. Hello. 
I am Amy. I use she, her, they, them pronouns, and I am playing Lidin and Merev, our uh, ASMR cleric of the grave, who... Spoop. Yeah, she's fine. Everything's fine. I'm sure. All right. Let's pass it down to your polar opposite, our tiefling, uh, Robin, who is playing a tiefling, strangely. What? Shh, you're not supposed to tell the audience I'm actually a tiefling. Just don't, don't be it's ashamed of who secret. you are. Okay. Oh, it's my secret. All it's right. my secret. Um, hello, everyone. I am Robin. I uh, use she, her, or they, them pronouns. I may or may not be a tiefling. You cannot confirm or deny this. Um, <laughs> anyways. Um, you just got to try to light you on fire and see if you have resistance, really. I think that's. Mm, you know. You could be a genasi, you know, though. You never know. Fire, be. Robin. Fire, Robin. Wee. <laughs> Ghost to put on wiki <laughs> um but yes i am playing our uh, tiefling question mark um blood hunter order of the mutant uh ivy i aka iteration six um who who got to kill her dad which was fucking great i remember that that was amazing um <laughs> So that was fun. She worked out some issues. Uh, now she's going to go back and maybe kill him again. So that'll be like double double therapy I think she's going to get. And sh she still has some mommy issues. But you know, it's fine. She has wings. It's okay. Everything's fine. And she also has the plague. But it's fine. Everything's fine. I'm not scared for my poor baby at all. You shouldn't be. Also, where's Dirk? Where's Dirk? Where, where he <laughs> needs to be. Uh, all right, finally. Hello, Christine. Hello, I'm Christine, I use she, her pronouns, and tonight I am playing our ever so lovely and sweet, just human wizard, uh, Claudette Belmont. Nice. All right. It is going to be good to get back into game. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'll just readjust that. Boom. All right. We are good to go. Anybody have anything they need to discuss before we uh, start in? Anybody have any announcements? Anything like that? I asked to oh, give I, me a second. I forgot to mention, uh, I use she, her pronouns. Actually, yes, that is something that is new since the last time any of you uh, may have watched Rain of Amory's, uh, because I had to go change your name tonight, because uh, you're now listed as Cat. because uh, congratulations on your egg hatching. Right. Full trans baby. Ha, little trans baby. I'm the VFC's little trans baby. <laughs> I'm the only, I'm the only open trans person in VFC history. As far as far as we know, right? Well, someone's got to start it. I mean, it's not like they kept keep a history. Yeah. I will neither confirm nor <laughs> deny that as the local historian. Um, <laughs> I will say that I sure did publish an article the other night from from vacation, well, trapped vacation that was uh, definitely some of the shakiest history I've ever been able to research. <laughs> but hey. Uh, all right. Uh, so, folks, we are going to be started in just a second. Um, I want to thank you again for those of you who came out and supported us during Extra Life and who have joined us through the majority of the Reign of Emery so far. If you haven't, you're just starting new and you're, you're like, oh, yeah, I started following you guys and I thought this, this would be cool to watch. It is. Good to have you. Go back and watch the other episodes uh, because this is going to make absolutely no, no sense. I guarantee it. In fact, uh, I... Uh, I am going to make sure that it doesn't because I have to do some weird, weird things to make this game uh, nice. So uh, for those of you who did not catch last time, you probably should go check it out. But for those of you who ha got it and caught it live, um, the characters were in the future. They had traveled there through uh, the white door of, of Lys uh, looking for... Um, basically what was going on uh traveled to the capital where they uncovered a uh, a bit of a a bit of a trouble uh in that um uh, the entire world was dying and uh the characters uh, refresh me refresh me because uh i'm sure you all know what, what was going on any of you want to jump in about the plague destroying the entire everything yeah. The apocalypse that we now have to fix. Apocalypse yeah. now fix? <laughs> that we kind of... It's not a quick fix for apocalypses, is there? It's... We went back... According to us, it's a quick fix. ...door again. Hmm. But we don't know what's going to happen once we go through that door. Or have yeah. gone through that door. 
It was very tense. A lot of stuff happened. Okay. We fought a minor god. It's fine. We did it's fight fine. a minor god. Wait, the wasn't walls were made of flesh. Also, Ivy's mother. I. Yeah. It's a little bit. Fine. A little Everything's bit. fine. Neither confirm sister? nor deny. Neither. Let's give Talfer a yeah. hand. Just to go back ten days. Ten days. Right. Ten days. Well, we don't know where we're going up. Four days. We're... Four days. Four days. Oh, cool. Cool. Uh, oh, okay. Well, How many well, days back okay. was it? Hmm. A little bit less time than I thought. Yeah, I knew it wasn't very long. Well, it, we went probably we ten went ten forward ten days, and we're then we've been there days. for at least a couple days, I think, in the future. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we we've only been rest. there for one day. We had one long rest, I think. It was a you had two yeah. long rests, I think. I think. Oh, did we? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've been there for a couple days initially, and then another long rest. So then we've had two long rests. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So even more than ten days when we got there. I'm like a double ASMR now. I don't know if that's gonna stay. We'll see. I oh, I know. We'll see. Extra as an ASMR, really. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, the characters went and confronted a, uh, a being of great power. Uh, survived the encounter by running away, which is the correct option in my opinion, uh, and um, managed to reach an artifact known as the Black Door that sent them somewhere. The game ended with uh, the characters uh, leaping into the void and uh, appearing at the other side. Which uh, I think, well, not appearing at the other side, but, you know, jumping into the void at least. Uh, which is where we are going to pick things up. In a bit. For... In the dark places of the universe... There are those beings that stand apart. Some interfere, some change the very fabric of reality, and some merely watch, merely observe and judge. The god known as Lys is one such being. And as the blind god turns the pages of their ever-written, ever-writing, ever-unwritten book and observes the course of history across the world known as Elos, they see what happened in the days ahead. And as they feel the words rise up, into their consciousness as the world itself yawns and stretches, tears and groans under the weight of its own mortality. They watch the battle met. They watch the exchange of blows, the cacophonous rage of one barbarian, the death of a creature, a carbuncle. They watch the interference of other beings beyond the scope of such, uh, of such narration. And as they watch, and as they absorb this information, they feel something strange happen. Caitlin, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to roll me. Uh, so Talfrin just took a merit, pardon me, a, a feat last game. And uh, yes. I need you to roll on that. Oh, okay. Because what happened to you at the end of game drew uh... blood. So oh, we'll... absolutely. Yeah, and I'm going to let you roll twice. Okay. And uh, let me just pull up my reference sheet and I'll see what that does. Yeah. Is that a D8? I believe it was a D20. Okay. I can do that. So roll me, roll me two there D20s, tell me what you get. Got it. Uh, I got 16 and I got 10. Neither of these make any sense. I love it when that happens. Yeah. Do you want me to do it again? No, it's okay. 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 All right. As the words spiral 
around Luis. Any onlookers who were there would be able to see the swirling, the swirling geometric symbols floating in and out of the blind god's consciousness. Like small cartoon birds floating to and fro in the air, ghostly, incorporeal, spectral mist. The god frowns, and as she does, as he does, as they do, a soft gasp of surprise trembles over those eternal lips. For as they read the tome, the words shift and change. What occurred in that last fight was different than expected, was different than was written. It was It was a battle met. The creature in the body of Lucia Maravik transformed as the being created from her own blood, Ivy, stabbed her through. Her body swelled and expanded into a creature so large that it filled the chamber. The relics that had not been abandoned, crushed against the wall of writhing, moaning flesh, hundreds of screaming faces pulsating from the Icarus carapace that lined its supple, moist flesh. And yet, that was not all. For as Claudette and Leiden ran, they reached the black door and cleverly were able to open it using a simple knock spell. Looking back, they leapt through as an opportunity presented itself. One of their companions that had joined them, a young, well, and a strange mercurial priest of the trickster god Jalos. threw a shield between them and the rest of the fry. A momentary confrontation between the dark, rolling mass of flesh that was the Dark Star, Black Star. Although most of you weren't there to hear it. The ones who did and uh, let's see, I think that that would have been... Fairy would not be paying attention. I'm going to put that out there. Uh, okay, and Talifern was raging. Cool. Ivy, as you ran toward the door, you would have heard the exchange briefly between the two the creature and the cleric. The creature, with its many voices, screamed out, I thought you weren't going to interfere. I thought it was against your code. At which point, the cleric smiled, and as you took a glance back, you would have seen the smile begin to tear the fabric of the flesh at the corners of his lips, as if a chasm was opening in the space where his face presently resided. A cruel upward smirk that arced toward his, toward his eyes like a bolt of lightning. You already took one. My brothers would never let me live it down if I let you take another. Besides, I kind of like this planet. The battle was cacophonous. As the cleric danced with the with the elder being, uh, Veritrix Olstar hammered it from behind with all that she had, uh, her mech pumping energy cell after energy cell of lightning into it, 
before she realized that there was no ground to be gained and even a Pyrrhic charge like that was absolutely not worth it. As Ivy leapt toward the door, Vary had the right idea and launched herself through the air using the ejector seat, her tiny body hurling into the blackness. Until there were only two left. Yitri. The carbuncle. And Talfrin. Talfrin, you remember a pain in your hand, and you will until the day you die. The feeling of blood welling down an angry stump. Phantom pain as something swallowed a part of you that you'll never get back. Knowing that you will feel it being digested and gnawed on every night in your dreams. But that's not what happened. What happened was you felt the tendrils rise up and throw you, hurling you back against the, the rear wall. The bricks cracked your skull, cracked, until you, your brains felt like a runny egg. But you're tougher than that. And as your last friend leapt through, did you see any choice but to do so as well? No. This is one battle that he was alright to give up and follow for the greater the greater battle ahead. For the hand that you remember being bitten off. The last thing you remember as you leap through is Yitri, the carbuncle, leaving behind you. And just as it was about to make it through next to you, those tendrils wrapped around its midsection, squeezing it. You reached out to grab and pull, but only found purchase around the gem in its forehead. The last thing you remember before the blood was everywhere was... Tal? And then the darkness took you. Uh, please add Carbuncle Garnet to your inventory. Okay. For that is the only thing that survived. So there you go. That feat got you a director's cut intro, because I like that better. <laughs> also, we were in a little bit of a hurry last time. Because <laughs> one of our players got sick. So, And with that, you tumbled into the darkness. And at the edge of time and space, as Lise flipped through the books, flipped through the words, they smiled. Perhaps all is not written. <laughs> oh well. Let's hope. You fall. There is no telling how long or how deep the darkness is in which you plummet. Space and time only functions within context. And you find yourself suddenly bereft of such luxuries. You cannot see each other or yourselves. You cannot hear your screams. You cannot feel anything except for the weight of endless seconds and of a disjointed, weightless gravity. Like the moment before you fall asleep, where you swear that you're flying. While at the same time, your stomach dips out through the base of your spine. You fall. And fall. Into the black. But as well, this is not where our story begins. For it actually began some time ago. Actually, several years ago. In the capital. Uh, 
Miss Claudette. A knock on the door of your hotel. One of the guards. You are in the hotel. There with your family. One of the the regal. Regal. Just most amazing hotels in all of Emery's. With its wide, ornate, golden hallways. Its plush carpets made of all manner of fabric pulled from other realms. Hmm. Some willingly, some by purchase. Others by um, less scrupulous means. You, um... <clears throat> You're there for, uh... For a special reason. You are attending a ball. You're home from the academy for the week. It's over the holiday breaks. And you've been fortunate enough to gain an invitation to a masked ball. All of the nobility is. And you were able to bring a friend as well. Your good friend Leiden is there with you. Your hand. Hmm. What do you do? Um, I guess I'll answer the door. There are three soldiers outside, all dressed in full garb, only their chins uh, visible beneath their helmets and visors. Their outfit, uh, their outfits are all some of the imperial, uh, imperial best, very uh, bright, um, bright blue velvet brocades, uh, sashes denoting that they are Imperial Royal Guard. Each one of them, handsome in one way or another. And uh, there are three of them, as I said there. Uh, one of them is, um, well, why don't we just do this? Uh, out of the three of you who are not in this scene, would you like to play two of these soldiers? Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Describe who they are. Describe what they look like. So they're dressed in these these blue, uh, broad, uh, double-breasted uh, military uniforms, uh, long sashes, um, helmets that are very almost hawk-like in their in their construction. Are yeah, they men or women, one. or and what races? Probably human, I would imagine. Jeff oh. is a is a human. <laughs> Jeff? Yep, Jeff. Jeff, okay. Jeff. J G E O U F F E. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. So so his oh, name right. is J Jeff. Joy. Jeff. Jeff. Oh, Jeff. It's, oh, it's a Masolian name. I understand yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that all makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff is human. He has curly red hair. That's sticking uh, out from the bottom of the helmet? Yeah, yeah. You can see it's just like a puff. Um, you know, picture like... This is the best NPC already. Thank you, <laughs> J Jeff. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, he is... He is 5'8". Uh, He's not super, super uh, tall, but he is. he is jacked. He goes to the. He does not skip any day at the gym. So he looks like um, modern day Carrot Top. Got ya. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, and he's just like, he's quiet. So he's very just standing there, being very, very quiet. But like, he looks like he could fuck you up, kind of, kind of guy. I mean, Jeff absolutely could. Like, I, yeah. I would not mess with Jeff. Okay. Uh, and Caitlin, who is your person? So by contrast, uh, probably Barton. Pardon. Is a tall, lanky, seems really quite uh, quite young to be a guard. Kind of, you know, has a, hunches over a little bit. Doesn't look too sure of what he's doing, but he's doing his he's doing his damn best, and you can tell. He's just really he's stoked to be there and stoked to be doing his job, but he's just a little bit unsure all the time, and he can't shake it. That's fair. He's he's doing very well though. Like I, he should be prouder of himself than I think he gives himself credit for. I just, I just probably yeah, yeah. He's got low self-esteem, but you can tell it shines through. Nice. 
Uh, and there's a third man there as well. He's just around six foot tall, uh, rather lithe, kind of um, uh, in his early 20s, growing into his muscle. Um, not much is visible aside from that he has dark hair and uh, fairly bright eyes um, that are, f that are uh, visible through the front of his visor. Um, and with his white glove, he is the one that knocked on the door. Miss Belmont. She was kind of, yes. Your um. As you uh, are you opening the door when you say that? Yes. Okay. Uh, as... She just kind of like lean her upper body out of it. Okay. And... As you open the door and look out, there is a a, a momentary pause as uh, the two of you. Um, make eye contact for a moment <clears throat> um your your guard duty has arrived if there's anything that we can do um to do you have any luggage to carry or anything else i don't believe so how would you be Later. dressed for this So how are you and Leiden dressed? Yeah. Uh, do we have anything that needs to be carried? I don't think so. <laughs> um, Leiden's dressed to go wherever, like, because we're going of... to a ball, right? So mm -hmm. she's probably in a less... Whatever Claudette's wearing, slightly more understated and simple. All right. Probably in pale colors, maybe like um, like blues and whites. Okay. And uh, what kind of mask are you wearing? Hmm. It's just a big beefy skull. I think Leiden's mask actually has like I think it's very simple but it has hints of fed like wispy feathers like around just like on printed on it like it's not actual feathers but it's got detailing that makes it look like it's wings kind of okay. very very subtle um she's basically trying to look elegant and like will support the noble family but without being over the without being like that that middle ground that little middle ground of being elegant and but understated okay and christine what is yours looking like uh so just mask or the mask outfit okay uh well because i i went and looked up ball gowns real quick to try and decide what okay. Claudette I can't I can't open images while we're streaming, so I can't yeah. see what you're saying. Um well, I popped it in so other people could look at it if they wanted okay. to. But uh I found one that so I'm thinking this is what Claudette is wearing. So it's kind of like it's a bit straight across the front, nips in at the waist, and then flows out in layers of it looks like tulle, sort of pale sky blue sort of color with some balloony kind of sheer sleeves that come from below the shoulder down to just above the wrists. Or kind of below the elbow and it's got silver foil detailing on it i'm just that it's quite pretty and very sweet um so i think light and relatively simple i have a feeling like in emery's that a lot of the more formal outfits probably have a lot of brocade and a lot of gilt and over-the-top fanciness mm -hmm. um, nice. and then Otherwise, I think I think she'd wear a mask with like some butterfly details or something. That feel feels like it fits. Okay, sounds good. Um, if I may, the soldier in front of you uh, offers you the corner of his arm. As for imperial imperial guard to transport, this is traditional. Uh, why? Thank you. 
which means that it's between Jeff and Barton to offer an arm similarly to Leiden. Who takes the honor? Uh, m- ma'ams. Uh, Barton will try to go for it. If you've got any luggage, I can uh, haul it oh. on my back. Uh, oh, I was just gonna... Oh, okay. And That's what I'm here for, miss. A small bag. Like, has almost nothing in it. It's probably a bag of holding, I assume. <laughs> Hold a tiny little bag. Well, I was expecting it to be a bit what, heavier, but, you know, this will work, miss. Uh, but it's it's an honor. He tips his um, helmet. Uh, thanks. Sorry, what what, what were your, na- your names? Oh, but Barton. Barton, miss. Uh, Barton? J- and, Jeff. And Jeff. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a pleasure. I'm Leiden. Um... Uh, she will tentatively grab uh, Barton's offered hand. Uh, have you been with one of these before? I have, miss. Okay. They're lovely. You'll love it. Uh, okay. Before long, you are riding through the center of town in a beautiful ornate carriage. The rain from the previous night has left deep puddles along the main thoroughfare. And as you move even through the richer areas of the capital, you can see that, well, it's not always the most glamorous here. There are people, uh, those of um, lesser means lesser determination sticking to the shadows watching with wide eyes as the carriage rocks back and forth um claudette your suit um uh, pardon me not suitor uh your um what's the word i'm thinking of guard your uh Escort. 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 Thank you. Guard. Thank you. Sorry, my brain's not working tonight for for words, which is unfortunate because it's my job. Um, your escort uh, smiles. I should have introduced myself earlier. I, I, since we're doing that, um, uh, Lieutenant Cass. It's a pleasure. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you as well, Miss Belmont. Um, we'll be going in through um, through the Western Gate. And uh, as you can see, it's um, not necessarily the... Well, the southern approach is not as safe as it used to be. And can I get both of you to make me an insight check? As you're looking around. Sure. Uh, 19. 19. Fantastic. That's a 12? And okay. I'm very glad that I have proficiency in that. So that's 12. All right. Uh, as you are moving through the area, you're going to hear the sound of ringing bells and angry people in the distance what appears actually at first to not be anger but just to be perhaps they're caught up with celebration this is of course the empress's birthday but no the mob is on the edge of the main grounds being held back by the military Overhead, you can see Imperial ships monitoring large spotlights sweeping across the city. It almost looks like a gala event. As you rush over a puddle, water will spray into the crowd, and some passers-by, including one small halfling there on a vacation, uh, finds herself soaked to the bone by the passing carriage. Very, do you say anything as you are soaked by the water there? You just came here for a party and you ended up in the wrong side of town because you bought the wrong map. <sighs> Fucking nobles. <laughs> Ugh. I'm glad we've never had to actually be them. 
Well, and she's going to pull out her map of where she is, which I, and I imagine that it's just going to crumble because it's soaked. Basically. Basically. She's just going to throw it on the ground, turn around, and start walking away. Uh, as you turn, you are going to come uh, face to belly button, basically, uh, with a tall, well, basically, you're going to turn and go boom, and just kind of bounce back as you hit this, like, rock-hard wall of abs, uh, and kind of dressed in what is a very skimpy outfit, uh, overall, a midriff completely showing, um, but kind of wrapped in what can only be considered like an anime style hood. You know what I'm talking about? Like the hood wrap. Um, you are going to see and and smell at this range what can only be um, a very, very fit woman who smells slightly of charcoal. Watch where you're going. Sorry. <sighs> can I make, get a... Oh, it, sorry. You, you can make me a perception roll, yeah. I was going to ask, can I get a perception roll? Absolutely. Look at us. Great minds think alike. That's not too bad. How do I add to that? I'm going to do a disguise check. Um, that's going to be a 19. A 19. Uh, what you're going to see is that there is a... Um, what can only be described as a tiefling standing in front of you, blending in with the crowd. Um, she's tall. Her hair is very, very pale. And um, instead of the traditional two horns, you only see one horn jutting up where another one has been sheared away. You should watch where you're going, half pint. Well, maybe next time. <laughs> she tilts her head to the horn. side like, she tilts her head to the side like a dog that's heard a whistle I like your horn she's gonna rush past <sighs> she pivots and moves into the crowd after casting kind of a, a what the hell kind of look at your back as you kind of just vanish kind of like into a sea of people right and uh before long, a few quick jumps and she scales the side of a nearby building. Can I keep an eye open for her? Uh, you you may try, yeah. Uh, what I want I, you to do is make like me... To... Give me I'm a perception roll with disadvantage. doing? Because she seems awfully sus. Uh, uh, perception with disadvantage? Disadvantage. There's so many people here, it's going to be hard. Like, you're milling okay. around, like, hundreds of people who are at the edge of the uh, of the palace grounds. Well, um, that's going to be a... 18, 19, 20, 21. 22. 22? Yeah, because well, yeah, my, my, my better one was an at 20. Nice. So you're going to get a... You're going to be able to see a general idea of where she's headed and kind of be able to kind of, like, keep an eye... Are you following... Yeah, I'm really curious. Okay. Uh, you're going to be able to follow uh, to the edge of an alleyway nearby to one of the grand cathedrals to um, to the orphan uh, that overlooks the main palace grounds. And um, alongside of that is some type of government building, you know, the type columns, all sorts of like scroll work dangling from the side. Um, very old school Emrazian architecture. Uh and as you round the corner and and look for her, you're going to see her take um, take the wall. Uh, now, mind you, the the roofs of these buildings are about 150 feet up, uh, and you're going to watch her just kind of boundly scale up the side of the building. Uh, as she finishes Batmaning herself up, uh, you will see her round the corner of a roof. And just one moment, uh, Robin, can you do me a favor and roll me a perception? Yeah, I was going to ask if I was there. She's watching to make sure if her lovely sister is getting followed. Uh, perception, perception. You just got percepted. No, that's a seven, Ivy. That's a seven. Add a, add a girl. There we go. Rolling Perfect. the dice well tonight. Ivy, as you overlook mm -hmm. 
the festivities. Down beneath you, you can see a throng of people. Hundreds of them, hungry, starved, angry. They want the wars to end. They want some food in their bellies. Most of them are halflings. Many of them are humans. Others are some of the other races that exist on the periphery. But that's not why you're here. It's not to observe and to get a sense of things or to see the gowns of the assembled nobles, the finery as they step out of their carriages and eat tapas and drink wine on the balconies nearby. Although, there's something somewhat mystifying about it. The elegance, the the spectacle. What do you like the most? Hmm. I think Ivy likes the dresses. I think she likes, and she's from what little books she's read, I think she likes seeing the outfits that people have. Because she probably only has the one that she wears basically and so she's probably like a little bit like hmm it's a waste of resources but they are pretty aren't they though you hear over your shoulder as the tip of a knife pricks you in the hip you're supposed to be keeping watch sister V says to you I'm sorry V Looking for the pretty, pretty dresses. Well, did your scouting yield anything? Nothing of note. Heard rumor that one of the escaped slaves was going to be down there, but I don't smell any brands. Hmm. Well, we could always have to get a little closer. The night's still young, sister. Yes, it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> she holds up her, her long curved dagger and swings it around her finger a few times, like the way that some scribes would do with a pen or a quill. Lucy's hungry, and I want to feed her soon. <laughs> Can I try and make a swipe for her dagger? <laughs> yes, you may. Make me a sleight of hand. Sweet. Okay, dice. I'm not rolling you because you were roll a six. All right, let's let's try you. Let's see if you like me tonight. That's much better. That's gonna be a dirty twenty. Okay. All right. Uh, so you are going to be able to slap the blade. Are you just trying to knock it out of her hand? Yeah. Cool. Uh, can I? What is Very doing? Is she trying to climb up too? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not that conspicuous. Is she? Is she trying to ride her rabbit up? Um, no, but she probably would, oh, no, because he can't actually communicate. Um, no, she's just trying to see if she can get a, a vantage point to see what's happening. Okay, uh, as you were trying to spy at the rooftop, uh, one moment, please. Yep, okay, you're going to hear, you're going to look up and hear, as uh, a fucking dagger the size of your arm flies down and embeds itself in the wall half an inch from your eyeball. Like, <laughs> can I Make me a strength roll. Make me a strength check. I need to see if you can actually pull it out. This thing's got momentum behind it. I rolled a nat 20 to see how close it got to very... <laughs> When you kill when you kill a fairy in the prequel. Pime paradox. <laughs> and, and you have to figure out how she's actually alive in game. I don't have to. I just say she is. That's fair. Um, that's gonna be a, a sixteen. A sixteen? Okay, you can. Yeah. You'll eventually pull it out of the old old woodwork along the side of the building. <laughs> and how nice is this dagger? Let's find out. <laughs> 
Uh, it is it is uh, very sturdy. I can say that. Uh, very nicked uh, and lovingly sharpened. <laughs> Ooh, that's really nice. Hey, the halfling's got a knife! You hear from one of the local guards pointing down the hall, or pardon me, down the alleyway at you. Hey, you! Get back here! I mean, it did just come down from the, from the sky. <laughs> Have you checked the rooftops? Can I get a persuasion roll? Yes. Uh, with disadvantage, because there's a riot happening. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, there is. Yeah. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> Ah, that went down my skirt. Natural 10. Uh, well, neither of them were natural 1s or 10s. Hmm. Um, natural 10 is not a thing, but hey. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, technically it is, but it just doesn't mean anything. That's true. Uh, you're, um, right. you're right. That's going to be a 14 on disadvantage. A 14? Um, you are going to have, a, like, he'll glance up, which is going to give you enough of opportunity to run. Basically. Okay, cool. Uh, with that, you are going to run off into the night. Uh, and we are going to cut back to uh, the gates open into the palace grounds and the carriage rolls inside. Uh, what are... Uh, what's Barton talking about as uh, as the gate closes behind? Oh, oh. Uh, trying to make kind of awkward chit-chat uh, with nice. Leiden. Um, kind of just... So what do you uh, do generally uh, when you have some uh, spare time? I, well, no. I go and socialize, I suppose. I, I mean, I spend a lot of time in the orphan temples. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, cleric training. Um, ah. so I, I, I mean, I, I spend a lot of time around dead things. He's um, going to look a little bit uncomfortable at that and just kind of just, <clears throat> I see. Very interesting. Uh, but, but, but not today. I, I haven't, these are clean clothes. Um, oh, do I, you I, kill I, these things yourself? Do I, do I what? They're clean clothes. Do you? Uh, sorry, I, <clears throat> I've, I've, I've overstepped. The carriage rocks <gasps> as something collides oh. with its wheel, um, knocking it he's off. He's gonna its try track. to. He's gonna try to keep leading stable. Go ahead, and make me. Uh, uh, make me well, a. You're forward. <laughs> make me a uh, a dex check or a strength <laughs> check. Uh, okay. Uh, oops. So his I bonus is plus four. Uh, 14. <laughs> 14? Okay. So yeah. how do you stabilize Leiden? Um, you probably just, just, the first thing you think of is hey. probably just, um, probably more of like a hand around just up here. As, as up here as he can manage as it's rocking. But just are kind of like. Are we next to each other then? So you're like so. trying to like. Oh, or, yeah. or are we sitting across from each other? Up to you. Hmm. Next to each other is fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we're sitting next to each other, then yeah, you just put a put a an arm across like this. Are you all right? I'm fine. Thank you uh, for your quick thinking and reaction. Thank you, ma'am. I do my best. Uh. Anyway, where were we? Um. We were talking about. Well, what that's I... smirking at you from across the carriage. And while this is happening, Leiden is keep side eyeing and like looking at Claudette <laughs> and being like looking back at Barton and then over at Claudette and kind of being like, help me. <laughs> the lieutenant leans over his shoulder and like speaks through a little vent to the driver. It looks like we've blown a wheel. Um, we'll have to walk you the rest of the way if that's all right. Of course. Yes. You the get door. tired, I'm sure. I'm sure we can manage. The door will open, and um, uh, Lieutenant Cass will step out and offer a hand back to Claudette. 
uh, she will take it and let him help her out. Eden is looking at this and watching this very carefully. Oh, he'll help you down to the ground if, if you wish. All right. Um, Claudette will also turn and speak to the driver for a moment. All right. Uh, the driver Thank is them for the a... ride, but ask them to be careful to not splash others for as much as she enjoys having a ride herself. She does not want to inconvenience. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Of course, ma'am. I hand him a tip. <laughs> oh, it's not the necessary. very delicate little like bag. She probably has a few in her in her pockets. Mm. That's one thing a ball gown's good for. Pockets. You're making that canon in Amory's, huh? In Amory's, ball gowns have pockets. Oh, absolutely. I mean, except for modern ball gowns, they did. Hmm, fair. They had massive pockets. <laughs> With that. Pockets of holding. You find yourselves across the vast palatial estate. Your, your guards will escort you across. And as they do, you'll have to make your way across... Ooh, about about ten acres worth of old stonework. This is the side where all of the major ceremonies occur. The palace um, is just on the other side. And of course here is where the Stone of Aurea is. An ancient monolith from the founding of Emrys. It has a... Um, and as a structure built over it to keep away the rain, an old columned uh, open air structure, similar to say the um, uh, the um, the Parthenon, I think is what I'm thinking of. Um, but you've never actually been inside. It's you've seen it at a distance. It is a tremendously important relic. In fact. It is there, on at the base of the Stone of Aurea, that all Amrisian rulers are sworn in. They pledge their oath to it. And we're going to pass very near it? Or? Very near it. In fact, uh, you would have passed right in front of it, but now you are walking directly past it. It is about 15 feet away. At least the, the base of it is. Claudette's going to take a moment and swerve over to look at it. <clears throat> she's surprisingly strong when she's interested in a piece of history. Uh, and she very handily directs her guard over to it. The lieutenant will glance over at uh, at Barton and uh, and Jeff, and with a simple nod, uh, they will know to just keep walking with Leiden. He's going to look back and just be like, mm. Claudette pulls a tiny notebook out of her pocket. That's less exciting. <laughs> the monolith itself appears to be made of blue, of blue gemstone. It glows from within. It's, it's like the tip of a spear jutting out of the ground nearly 50 feet tall. On either side, it is flanked as if it were a trident with the tips reaching up in a diamond formation. And at the center, a glowing sigil. Now, the gemstone itself, in places, appears like broken glass. You can see all manner of ghostly lines lacing through its crystalline structure. And uh, as you approach, can you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Can you make me a charisma check? Okay. Okay. Uh, and you may roll this with advantage. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I didn't confirm that nat 20, but... Uh, that's fine. One second. But, uh, so that's 22. Uh, 22. Uh, mm -hmm. As you approach, there will be a soft humming from the stone. 
and what appears to be these 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 hundreds of marble-like cracks running through its gemstone exterior uh, will begin to glow hmm. and move. And it's at that point that I need you to make me an arcana roll. Okay. You could also make me a history roll. Either one. Uh... 21. Okay. Let me think. One sec. Yeah, 21. Um, let's do Arcana. It would be the same for either. Okay. All right. So as you were looking at it, you're seeing that all of these swirling cracks are actually, they're lines of text. Pieces of Emerisian history. Names. Dates, oaths. They swirl through this like you or I today would see computer, computer code. Move through a digital landscape. She's very enthralled by this. My lady, oh, are you certain that we should be in here? Sorry. Are you certain that we should be in here? Lu your lieutenant says. Is it off limits? It I've never seen it up close, only from a distance. Generally, you're only allowed in here with a member of the royal family. Oh. I suppose a quick peek won't hurt. We'll leave quickly. I won't yes, touch anything. Yes, my lady. I suppose, after all, if, depending on circumstances, you might be in that family someday. Really thought of that. <laughs> it's not my place to say. Oh no, no. But are you it's not um, the same, Claudette Belmont? I mean, I believe I'm the only Claudette Belmont, but I can't be certain. I haven't done a survey of the country. I doubt there are very many, but I suppose a, a quick, a quick peek wouldn't hurt. Besides, how are they going to tell that it's you? You're wearing a mask. It, it's just so, so, um, concealing, right? So what do you do? Uh, she is going to look at it very curiously and just have a look and try and, like, write a couple notes of what she sees. Maybe a quick, very quick sketch. Mm -hmm. If she's not technically supposed to be there, then she'll try and make it quick, but it's a fascinating magical artifact. <laughs> Yes, and you can see where the uh, where the coronation is. The there's actually a bit of a place in the stonework there where it has been worn away just a little bit by knees. Um, but yeah, I think she'll give off the the attitude that this is far more interesting than a ball. <laughs> It's it's funny. A lot of people, I think, my lady, would see this as a uh, rather boring artifact. You take great joy in this. But it's so fascinating. It has history written right into it. All this record. I mean, even the floor. <laughs> if you look at it, you can see where countless... Emperors and empresses have knelt to take their vow. They've changed the very structure of the floor. Stone itself, worn away by constant use. <laughs> I suppose Besides so. Besides the magic. It is very... Magical. <laughs> I've been on guard duty outside of this before. I don't think I ever quite saw it like that. Thank you. Oh, 
Well, you're welcome. <laughs> How cold is it right now? Right now, it is uh, is brisk. It is an autumn evening. I'm not sure if they actually grabbed cloaks or not. <laughs> Claudette might not have been paying attention, so she's in a, like, basically sleeveless, backless dress. <laughs> Are you are you quite all right? It's it's a little chilly, but that's all right. Uh, well, fortunately, um, and uh, one of of course the the bits of the uniform is a um, is a blue crushed velvet half coat. Well, half half cape. Uh, may I? It is my duty and service. And you will find it quickly draped over your shoulders. Um, carrying a bit of the uh, the warmth of his body with it onto you. She'll kind of pull it a little closer around and then go back to sketching real quick. <sighs> All right, I suppose we should continue. Of course. Your mother would be ever so disappointed if I did not show up properly. Well, we shall not disappoint her then. Good, if you have never met my mother, you did, it is not something not to do. Hmm. And with that, you make it into the ball and have a rather lovely time. It's a good event. I'd like you and Leiden to both do me a favor and make me a performance roll to see how well you can dance. Okay. Performance, you say? Yes. Excellent. This is actually one of my good things. Oh, no. That's a nine. Okay. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. You dance divinely. You dance so wonderfully... Um, that you even put lead in, who's normally just the most performative, uh, like just just the most lovely voice and presentation. You you managed to put her to shame. Some of your blade singing basically rubbed off on this. Your motions are deft and and well, then I powerful. I probably had dance lessons since I could walk as well. It's true. Uh, you in fact cut quite a striking rug with your cousin Akario Marevek, who is there, of course, dressed in his. Uh, in his uh, uh, red doublets. She's deploying the full proper distance needed for this dance. You're a little far away, aren't you, cousin? Oh, well, this is the way Mother taught me, so... <laughs> oh, your mother's such a you divine... You wouldn't to disappoint my mom, would uh, you? No, probably not. I'm sure she's watching. And the dance ends. Applause scatters around. And then, can I get an insight roll from you, please? Sure. Mm -hmm. 19. 19? As you are glancing around, you are going to get a sense that the sudden hush in the room has fallen directly around you. The crowd parts, forming into more of a, like a light bulb shaped corridor with you at the center of the circle. And slowly, a man dressed in, um, in a white doublet with, um, accents of blue and uh, a flowing half cape of gold uh, will approach, dressed in a mask that is... It looks like it's made of flowing clouds and mist. It actually kind of undulates in place. He approaches. And there's something kind of familiar about his gait and jawline beneath the mask. May I have this dance? Miss Belmont. I'd be... Uh... Christine is going blank-minded for a moment. <laughs> Honored. 
There's the word. Despite the mask, there is... Uh, actually, pardon, pardon me. Let me uh, take a step back there. Uh, he would just simply have asked, may I have this dance? For you're not supposed to use names at these things. That was my bad, everyone. I'd be honored. Uh, however, as you as you dance with him, there is no... Um, there is no deceiving you with that insight roll. This is Ad Siegel, Cassian, Amon, the crown prince. And you dance very well. But I'd like to see you again. Give me another performance roll. Okay. Jesus Christ, Cass. <laughs> I got a nat 20. No shit, really? Yeah. Did you? Me too. Gain a point of inspiration if you don't already have one. Yes! Is, is this literally Kitten Cinderella in... Yeah, this is literally like... She's like, literally wearing pale blue. This is literally like like Disney traced their dance. Okay? Just like overlaid it. Rotoscoped it. Uh, you have a fantastic dance and actually will dance for quite a few numbers uh, before getting kind of lost in the crowd. And um, and as the crowd finally uh, gets over this the, the moment and the the awe and spectacle of your dance, you can't say that there was no connection there. There's just something like a little bit of a spark there. With two nat twenties, there's gonna be a spark. All right. All right. Um, and as something. part of the final the final dance, um, he pulls you close, pressing uh, yourselves together at the collarbones. Um, your cheeks next to each other. She goes a little wide-eyed behind the mask. Thank you for the dance. It's been most eye-opening. Thank you. He smiles and winks. Perhaps I'll see you again. Maybe somewhere more magical. And with that, he breaks and is gone into the crowd. And another hand has pro-offered itself toward you. May I have this dance, my lady? A rotund man with a curled mustache asks. Do I recognize who it is? Uh, this is... Uh, this is... Oh, God, those are all women's names. Uh, this is... Uh, oh, God. This is... This is an improv improvisational character. Uh, this is Arulf Ragno. Count Is it Ar somebody that I would horribly offend if I pretended I could see my mother calling me in the distance? You'd have to definitely make a persuasion check to not insult him. He oh, is, uh, he basically looks it. like Dr. Robotnik. She, she's gonna go for it. She's not gonna ruin that magical moment with, like, immediately having a bad dance afterwards. Alright, go ahead and make me a persuasion, a persuasion roll. 19! <laughs> oh, I suppose I can always dance with you. And he turns and grabs uh, Leiden's hand where it was pro-offered to another... You'll do just fine. I was... Nope. Claudette mouse over his shoulder. <laughs> Make me a performance roll. Let's see how well you dance. That's eh, an 11. And Claudette is going to like thoroughly extract herself from that area. Okay, that wasn't a him. one, thankfully. No, okay. that was a... That ends up being a total of... 13? 13? Seven. Nice. And with the sound of the crowd in the distance angrily at the gates, Claudette, you make your way over to your mother, who smiles and kisses your cheek as you approach. Claudette, I really wish that you would have come by before you, before you came here. It's so great to have you home, she says. It's lovely to visit. So great to have you home. Have you home? Have you home? Echoes through your mind. You fall into the darkness. 
And I want everyone here to do me a favor and make me a, uh, make me a constitution save. Hey. Oh. 14. 19. Not as bad as I thought it would be. 21. 17. 20. At least I'm good at these. <laughs> nice. And, uh, what was Ivy's? Oh, I put in the chat 16. Oh, okay, cool. All right. I popped mine in the chat because I wasn't sure if I talked over Cat. Fantastic. We All right. Cancelled each other out. There is going to be a oh, swirl is. of motion, and suddenly, uh, there is going to be a cacophonous crunch. Uh, Claudette, you are going to feel a body collide on top of you. Leaden. A smaller body is going to collide on top of you, followed by one with all manner of points. <laughs> and then finally, after a count of three, Talfrin's expansive size, well, his his full lankiness, is going right. to land on top of all of you. You find yourselves in the dark. I think Claudette started... Out shrieking when she got collided with. Okay. And it's kind of turned into a wheezing shriek as all the air has gotten crushed out of her. <laughs> all right. So what do you do? All of you are, um, all of you find yourselves in a dark enclosed space. It's tight inside of here, and you find that um, it smells dusty and. <laughs> Oof. Slightly musty as well. Uh, Vary's gonna pop uh, dark vision. Pop, pop dark vision. Yeah. Oh wait, that is in the spell. All yes. right. So, uh, second level. Uh, you see. Uh, you think that you're in a tomb. The <clears throat> the material in front of you is perfectly flat. It's like you're in a mausoleum. I'm gonna push. I uh, very off of me, as I'm assuming that's the one who's landed on me. Yes. Uh, gonna yeah. roll yeah, so Lisa's gonna push very of off and be like, mm, Okay, uh, can you do me a favor and Why make me a strength shove check? On Leiden. Talfrin, make me a strength check. Oh, are yeah. you are you all doing it? Then make it with advantage if everyone's pushing. Yeah. Does well, he's he's gonna he's gonna try he's gonna like try yes. to roll off the mound okay. of people. Okay. Uh oh. Uh strength check would be a twenty five though. For me. Okay, there's going to be a and the front of this mausoleum is going to crack and slam open and you are going to find yourselves all collapsing forward onto carpet oh oh it's gonna touch it pat it what can i the, see anything you can uh, as you do that oh, a, nice. uh, you're going to hear the sound of a of a mug shattering pardon me of a teacup shattering as uh one moment please boop boop Boo. Somebody. Uh, as a I mean, um, yeah. as a green dragonborn me. was polishing a tea set nearby, looks down at you, <laughs> and uh, you will immediately recognize this as Katya, a dragonborn servant of House Belmont. <gasps> Miss Belmont, welcome home. She says, "Did we just thank you?" Was you were sprawled on the floor of your study. What's the date? Well, um... A, a spell went wrong. I I don't know oh. what's happened. Um... It's, um... Uh, three days to the Empress's birthday. Tear. Welcome home. It's so lovely to have you. I'll be sure to tell your mother. She'll be so happy to have you home again. Uh, uh, wait one moment. <laughs> I, let me surprise Mama. Oh, she'll be surprised. I'm sure. Uh, did the dragonborn drop the... Oh, yeah, she just dropped the teacup directly on the ground. Oh, oh, bugger blast. Uh, Fairy's gonna go over and go mending. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, the teacup she's will gonna reassume. Present the, she's going to present the teacup back up to her and be like... Yeah, it was just like know? a simple crack, so it was easy. Oh, well, thank you very much. 
So, where are we anyways? I mean, I uh, assume we're somewhere close if you know Claudette. Belmont House. This is your house. I see. <gasps> oh. I assume it's going to be a problem that there are three extra of us here. Yeah, I, I, I do in your house. Definitely Oops. don't belong mm. here. Can you remind me what the time Nor was? Nor do I, Ivy. Empress's birthday. Was that when they got uh, married? That was the day before they got married. Day before, okay. Or was so the day they days. got married, I believe? I believe it was. I uh, think it was the day they got married. Yeah, it was the day. So, they, so you got you have about three days. Okay. Okay. And then she basically, like, died that night. Yeah. Okay. And we're in the capital then. You are in, uh, you're in uh, Duchesne. No, that's right. Because you're the noble family of Duchesne, so. Belmont. Yes. So really close to the capital, though. Yeah, you're like a day, a day's like a day's leisure journey away. Yeah, we're we're back in Duchesne. Oh right. Oh, that's not good. It's look at us go. Everybody, okay. Leiden's looking around at everyone just to make sure, like, Is looking my at uncle our uncle still here. Injuries. Your uncle. Oh, no, he's gone on to the capital, my lady. Okay. Has to prepare for the, um... Well, you know. Right. <laughs> oh. okay. You're dismissed. Don't worry, I won't tell your mother that you're here yet. I'll let you surprise her. Wonderful, thank you. It's so welcome. Uh, you're very welcome. So glad to have you home. Welcome I'm gonna back give her a hug. Welcome back. Oh, welcome back home. All of you. Hi. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. And I think that is probably a good place for us to take our break. So, uh, folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And uh, same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> And, uh, oh, by the way, lose every item that is not attuned to you. Bye! <gasps> that you did not have prior to going. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So did, Ivy can have I, clothes. Oh, okay. I forget if I had to attune to my armor. You attuned to the poison armor. Yes, you did. Sweet. Awesome. I did not attune to my mech. Uh, did you I also left the, the mech, armor? so. I also left the mech. Did you attune would have been really funny. What armor did you I have? I would have tried the... Oh, the... I don't know if I had to... Oh, did I have to attune? The medium armor with cartridge slots? Uh, I'll let everybody make a. Uh, I'll make a. I'll, I'll let me do a save when we get back. But we'll be right back, everybody. Okay, don't, Nick. don't go anywhere. <laughs> taller than Christine for some reason. Hold on. Oh wait, no, Christine's way taller than me. That's what's weird about this. One sec. Boop, 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 boop. How did your window get big, Christine? It's all the personality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, welcome back, folks. <laughs> you, we you are, are muted, Christine, for that. Whatever you did, we just saw the hand motion. That's all we really needed, to be fair. It was a pretty good yeah, hand motion. True. It's true. There we go. Raise myself up a little. You raise me up. Raise myself up. Literally thought about that this, just as you were saying it. All right. So, uh, hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are here at the portion of the program where we talk to the chat, uh, which we're going to do for about 15 minutes because game is a little tighter tonight. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, what is up in chat land? What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? I realize that people are insane. Why? Oh, just the craziness um, of the, like, living in our area with, you know, mm. gas stations 
all literally running out of gas because people are just panic buying and literally we had mm. gas delivered yesterday back to the island and to yeah. victoria so, um yeah there were two gas stations on the drive yeah. home today i'm at like an eighth of a tank right now so i kind of kind of wish i could buy gas i'm kind of feeling like i've got got like a couple more trips in me i can go to the store right now i yeah on or an emergency day when it all started i had 70 kilometers of gas left in my car and it's like oh and, and that day i had to go out to souk to pick up the bun and then be able to make it back to work the next day in sydney um which is way more than 70k and so i was able to get 30 bucks worth on wednesday at lunch after waiting like 35 40 minutes and then thursday because i had to go do deliveries last night and usually thursdays is the busiest night of the week um you know usually i do about a thousand kilometers worth of driving on thursday nights mm. and so i thought okay well that's all, a know, thousand about a thousand on, on oh thursday yeah kilometers night. that's like 50 miles that's fair yeah <laughs> And so I'm like, okay, hey, well, I need more gas, so I needed to fill up on Thursday, and luckily enough, I was able to. But I had to wait in line for a long time for that one too. It was, it's so. And now every gas station is out between me and the Flying Club. Every mm. single gas station is out of gas. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot more transit. So anyway, so uh, basically, for those of you who don't know, uh, we're we're in British Columbia, and uh, British Columbia had some rain happen, and then the rain kept happening. And then uh, part of the highway uh, washed away. And then an entire town in the interior of British Columbia washed away. Uh, actually, you know, it's still there. It's just, you know, preserved underwater. Um, but it also stopped a lot of the rail lines. So, like, a lot of, like, supplies and gas and things like that aren't making it to us. And most of us are on an island. So Vancouver is completely cut off from the rest of Canada by road. Yeah. Which is actually All more of a problem for the rest of canada because vancouver is a port so mm -hmm. there's a shit ton yeah. of stuff that are in v vancouver right now that aren't getting shipped out to the rest of canada mm -hmm. as well so there's a problem on both ends aha suck it suck it your aliexpress yep. order is with us <laughs> if it came from china you know it came through vancouver it didn't go all the way around to like nova scotia exactly <laughs> yeah right it came through the the suez canal and then it went to no, it didn't go through the Suez Canal. But you get my point. You get my point. So anyway, yeah. uh, so that's what we've been dealing with. Uh, and uh, yeah. So I, I wanted to talk really briefly about uh, the beginning of game tonight. Because for one, I hope it wasn't too rocky. The the intro to uh, to a new mechanic. Well, not a mechanic, but a storytelling technique that I think is, is pretty useful. And I wanted to bring up. And that is uh, sometimes you're going to run a session. Uh, as a dungeon master, storyteller, game master. And it's not going to go quite the way you want it to at the end. Like, you're either going to be rushed, or the pizza guy is going to be showing up, or there's just going to be something that's going on. Like, in our case, um, like, Kat, you were feeling really sick, I think, last game. So, mm -hmm. and you were like, I'm going to die. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, so I'll rush through this, because uh, I know where your ending is. And I know, like, it's, like, through the door, because that's the best, like, cool, I can take a month off between games, if you're in the door. Yeah. But if it's like, and then the big bad guy's right there, I can't take a month off then. You know, because he's right, he's right there. He's right there. He's right there. Um, so I had to get you to the door. So I had to kind of like, kind of, kind of rush things because you had worked like seventeen days in a row or something like that, and had done a double yeah. shift that day. Uh, yeah, and it had been a really, really bad day. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was also not feeling great because I do remember you telling me, "Oh, we're gonna be finishing by like a certain time," and then so I was like, "Okay, I can hold on till 10:30. I can do it. I can do 10:30." And then when it started creeping, I'm like, "Oh, I'm not feeling great. This is hard. I want so, to be done." <laughs> well, and that's the thing, right? And it's 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 doubly so when you're like doing this in front of an audience, right? It's a little different than doing it at a table game. Mm -hmm. um which robin I, I actually have to get you into a couple of like non-stream table games because we that did that be, once really and it was that's how you ended up with critical mole critical mole, mole. mole. with mole mercer exciting mole you mercer what in the last 50 minutes the malahat has opened a two-lane traffic Ooh. Ooh. back and forth Ooh. it's happening again Ooh. baby Ooh. They fix that fast. What? I know, right? Yeah, Are they still closed like from week? 6 p.m. to 6 a.m.? No. Nope. No. That's over. Oh, That's wow. Over. Okay. I thought it was yeah. going to okay. so take like two weeks, and they've gotten it done in like four days. Shout out to MCON 
for right? fucking fixing that. And Tom's Jeez. been working really hard. Would anybody mm. like to see the bunny? Well, duh. I'm indifferent. <laughs> Joe has those buns, hon. Is that a donut or a bagel? It's a cinnamon bagel. Okay, you're okay. Say it looks bagely. Half it and looks half. Very bagely. Cinnamon. <gasps> Yo, Riggs bun. can see. Bun. So we have a cinnamon bagel on one side, and then we have a bun on the other. A cinnamon bun. By their powers bun. combined, we have a cinnamon bun. I have yeah. them. I will combine them. A hopping bagel. <laughs> you yes, your role in the middle is to do the assist. Yeah, this fusion is ha. Look how big his feet are. Why is Traz saying "God damn it, Amy"? And look at his tail. Why? Because you cinnamon bunt. Cinnamon mm-hmm. bunt. Meanwhile, tail. he is the least cinnamon bunny cinnamon bun <laughs> in the world. He's not a cinnamon his roll. I is just. I love he, that he's got the little white part, like whatever, like. Like, he the eye just, just is out. defined. I know, but, like, in general, like, that you can see it. He smells so good. I'm quotable again? What did I... Cinnamon bun. Um, so, uh, <laughs> what I was going to say, though, is that sometimes you're going to yeah. run a game and it's not going to go the way that you want it to, or you're going to be like, I forgot to mention the elephant. The entire campaign rests on there being an elephant in that room, and I forgot to mention it. I couldn't mention the elephant in the room. And you're going to feel like a complete tool and not be able to do it. Uh, This is where you can include a technique called the director's cut, which is literally where you go and rephrase the scene in a way that so long as it doesn't affect what the players did in any meaningful way, or if you get consent for it, like, and then you did this? Okay, good. Uh, So yeah, uh, never be afraid to play with your narrative uh, as a a dungeon master or storyteller. Just, Just do it. Because... You can always make it cooler in retrospect, and sometimes you got to go tip the pizza guy. Because it's, it's really true. Tip your pizza guys because they tip your drivers. Tip your drivers. Always tip. If you can't afford a tip, you can't afford to order. Yeah, because they get paid for that, and yeah, that's not necessarily your fault as a customer that the business doesn't pay them well, but they're human beings. Just give them money. La- like last night, for instance, I was doing deliveries. Thursday is usually my busiest night of the week. Last night, I was there for six and a half hours, and I did two deliveries all night. Ooh. Thanks to the meal that I had ordered, because I was so, because I was expect I get 200, 250 bucks every Thursday. I paid to be at work last night. I thought you got a free pizza, usually. Um, I did, wasn't able to drive my boss home last night. Um... And so I actually paid to be a delivery driver last night. Ouch. I've, I've had that happen when I've been a server before, where um, where my tips have been low enough because I got stiffed by big tables mm-hmm. that I ended up having to pay out percentage into the kitchen and to the, the bouncers and bar that I basically, like, I lost money on my tips. Yeah. Like, I was negative tips. Well, so like the, the thing that really bugged me was... It's like I had filled my car yesterday mm-hmm. uh, to you know, to get ready for a big night, but all they had was premium at my gas station that, that, that I went to. And you can't do premium, right? And I can't do premium. Now my car runs like a bag of shit and keeps dropping power randomly. Why does it driving. do that? Because the Atkinson cycle engines for efficiency are designed in a f- specific way, and the uh, the control module is programmed specifically for 87 octane. And so when it gets the much richer 91, it doesn't know quite how to work with it. And so uh, because it's so much richer, it will just cut injection to the cylinders randomly to make up for the fact that it's so much richer. And so I'll be driving along ah. happily, and all of a sudden it'll drop down to like 400 RPM for a couple seconds, and my car will just go, and it's like, wow, that's nice, and it's all because I had to fill it with premium. And everyone's like, oh my god, premium, and the gas station people are like, oh, all we have is premium, but we're selling it for regular prices, and isn't that great? And I'm like, no, it's actually horrible. Hmm. That sucks. I'm sorry. Damn. Because and that's awful. So many of the people around me at the gas station were getting like five, six, seven dollars worth of fuel because they were already full. 
Huh? And they're like, oh, I need, just need to top up my tanks. You're already full. Let the people who need to drive for work get gas. So someone from my work, she's a she's our front of house. Um, apparently, um, on Tuesday or whatever, whatever day it was that the gas was running out, uh, or Wednesday, um, Wednesday. she had three kilometers left on her car granted she should have filled up a little earlier than yesterday but she basically had planned to go to this shell that's near spinnakers that is like a kilometer away yeah she had to get a cab home and back to work because she could not drive her car because she had no gas we had to um uh one of our staff members who drove to work wasn't able to leave because they didn't have gas and so we actually had to raid the um, the gas we have for our little tractor at work. We, oh, I we, thought you were going to save have... the planes and just like, vroom, get out of here! Oh, God, well, like, none of us have a car vintage enough to run on Avgas, but it was on offer if we did. That's funny. Oh, my God. Yeah. What would your car do on that? Would that be better? It, or... would, it would shut down. Would it explode? It, it would just it, it would just shut down. Okay. I'd, um, yeah. I'd have to get new O2 sensors. Ease. I would have to get a new catalytic Ease. converter. Um, I would have to get new fuel injectors. I would write off my engine, basically. Ouch. Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. It wouldn't be very fun. I'm sorry. So, um, so we'll see how Saturday goes. Because we should have gas tomorrow. Should we? Okay, cool. Cause I would love to have some gas. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head out after game tonight and go look for any late night places that might have it still. I I might do the same thing. I've got <laughs> twenty bucks left in my wallet. Yeah, Random Roll. Equinox is correct. Um, some are under gas rations. Um, Emergency mm. BC was tweeting that out. I'm not sure where that applies to. Because I don't drive, so I wasn't really. I was like, "Wow, that sucks." Next, <laughs> so oh, oh, I don't drive yet. Although I did get my L again, so I get to be a loser all over again. Yeah, wasn't it like Very fun. max of thirty dollars of or thirty liters? Yeah, max of thirty of liters. Gas. I don't know what that means, but, but because that was being announced, people were panic topping up and like oh, trying to hoard called. even faster. Apparently, <laughs> I don't know. I could be. Yeah. I, you know what? I'd be, that's like a half tank of gas. I'll take it. Yeah. For me, that's like that real half tank. 30, well, 30 dollars or 30 liters? 30 liters. 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 Okay, liters that's like, that's like almost a full tank of gas for me. That's yeah. like, it's like, like seven gallons. gallons. Uh, right? All of our cars have 40 liter tanks in them. Mm. Okay. That's pretty good then. All of ours is in like bad. us? Yeah. Uh, you. Do uh, I? The, the soul, uh, my fusion, Robin, you're, uh, you're fit. It. Yeah. Um, yeah. All of our cars oh, don't give away our secret our, models. Our car also has a forty liter tank. Mm. Oh no! There's like six hundred thousand Honda Fits you know, in you only have the second every most second car Honda I ever see. Made. Yeah, <laughs> I see so many. I but know. I mean, I'm the only Fusion around with a bunch of Anime Girl stickers and That's a bright true. pink window banner with zero two on it. Also, to be That's fair, we're, our cars are the only ones with Dorktail's magnets on the trunks. Oh, well, that's yeah. very true. We're pretty it's easy. It's not to like find. we're identifying ourselves. Well, and like, nah, like, like, like Robin got <laughs> Robin got yelled at because of it in a good way. I did in a good I way. Got, I was gonna say like more like cheered for less less yelled shouted. I called Shout out. At, I'm not yeah. yelled. Yeah. Call out. Yes, Call me was out. Weird. That was awesome. That was so weird. <clears throat> Still, if, if you guys are in the chat, really appreciated that. Made me feel great. Whoever yeah, you are. Yeah, if any of you are in the local local British Columbia area and we're shouting out Dorktails, uh, cool. I'm, I'm happy about that. Do it. <laughs> and for Do it. Also, Ender, subscribe and smash that bell. Right? Uh, for Ender, yes. Avgas is 100 octane, but there's lead in it. And that is why you can't oh, run it. Oh, so you got, so it would give your engine the knocks. Yeah. Um, or wait, yeah, no. For, for... Wait, hold on. L lead was added to engines to take the knocks out. Yes, exactly. Because yeah. it's an octane booster. Mm. Um, and so, oh. for instance, the, the vintage Cadillac we had would run oh, great yes. on Avgas. Vintage cars love it. Tasha's old have... Cadillac? Yeah, Tasha's old Cadillac. Perfect on out gas. Yeah, okay. My huh. car totals the I end. mean, when it ran. Yeah, when it ran. <laughs> All right. So, fair, it about... wasn't her fault. It was <laughs> the previous owner's fault. Bring it down to Vancouver. 
So we got about three more minutes worth of this. You know, this is really weird. We only have 30 viewers right now because I didn't really super promote that we were back tonight. I was expecting people just to yeah. know. Also, I've been busy because I spent all day cleaning today and writing. I'm very mm -hmm. tired. I am very appreciative of the cleaning. I, yeah, I prom I'm permitting Christine second? to set up Christmas two weeks early because Chris Christine is a Christmas monster. I'm it's true. So excited. So, yeah, I'm doing after birthday, stream tomorrow. Fine. So I I cleared a lot of space today. Uh, don't go in it's the closet. Christmas I've got a, I got a lot of presents in there that need to be wrapped. Um, but oh, all right. Oh my God! Did you guys hear that? No, nope. no. I was no too busy cracking my own back and heard my I mean, back made bad. The noises. stream might have my back cracked. Zoom cancels out some of the sound, but need pictures. I mean, I could show you the empty space where all of my stuff used to be. Like my Leviathan axe, which I gotta mount that somewhere. But where? Over the TV, maybe. Then I can always look at the so Leviathan long axe. As it's and not I'm... heavy enough to hit the. If it falls or something. It's a prop. It's fine. It's fine. As long as it's not. I'm just. I don't know how heavy it is or if it's. My just TV's like a... pretty sturdy, and it if if it needs to be replaced, okay. it needs to be replaced. But, uh, yeah, so folks, um, real quick, uh, I wanted to say thank you all. Uh, for one, thank you all here for participating at various times throughout the year, because I know Kat didn't manage to get any time in recently. Uh, but you were back in August in at least one of our games for Extra Life, and hopefully I'll be able to convince you to come back and do it more next year. Um, but I wanted to say thank you to everyone who came out and supported us during Extra Life uh, the weekend before last. Uh, we absolutely slaughtered our total, like massacred it. We were hoping to raise twenty thousand Canadian dollars, and we raised. Well, let's find out what's the total right now. Let's 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 do the it math. It was twenty two thousand something. Like it was twenty two twenty two thousand dollars and change. Twenty two thousand Canadian dollars mm -hmm. uh, to help sick kids. We 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 did that, and I just wanted to say real quick that we did that entirely because of you. Um, I mean, we threw our own money at it and we, we you know, put on our events. But um, one of the things that I find about fundraising that is very difficult and um, that is one of the things that is difficult about being the type of enterprise that Dork Tales is uh, on a financial level is that like everything that we do is like um, either for charity or for the channel itself is very much like completely uh, based on what you are willing to provide. And uh, it's an interesting uh, thing. It's, it's It feels weird, bro. Um, y'all, y'all with me on that? It feels weird to be like, hey, if you like us, maybe tip us, right? Like, it's, it's just, it's a weird model I'm not used to. I'm used to, like, working, like, full time mm. and, like, doing that mm. kind of stuff. And, um, specifically for charity, I think, uh, I find that it makes it hard for me to feel like we, we did much, um, because... It's literally just this impossible amount of generosity that is uh, mm -hmm. coming out of each and every one of you. And that's not to downplay that, you know, like we ran a bunch of games and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but you stuck with us and you watched it. You enjoyed things and you paid to affect the results and make us do stupid stuff like have a cult of Furbies fight <laughs> the cult of Greg the Megalodon. Megalashark? Greg Megashark? the Meg. Greg, 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 Greg. Okay. Okay. So hold on. Hold on. Ugh. So I think... Uh, oh. in, <laughs> as of today, yeah. we raised $22,484 Canadian. You know what I have to say about that? Today. Oh, <gasps> Greg is real! <laughs> Greg! Greg! <laughs> also, I found this while I was cleaning. <laughs> Amazing. So. <gasps> bear gun! Except the wolf, the wolf part of the bear gun's broken. No, that's just what wolves sound like. What are you talking about? <laughs> Kelly, that's just they, what wolves sound like. What did you think sound like... sounded like? Oh, I didn't know that wolves were created by Skrillex. <laughs> oh, the wolf is broken. Hold on, hold on. I can fix it. Watch, watch. Yeah, that's just what wolves sound like. That's also what wolves sound like. Oh, this is what oh, eagles sound dear. like. <laughs> Freaking Are we sure that's like a seagull? Like a yeah, seagull. But yeah. don't eagles, no, eagles do sound like that. I they sound we have really a nest weird. of them in our vineyard. Uh, they do sound like that. See, if you they do that with the like bear, that. you're hitting a round <laughs> of a pause. 
If I do oh, that, the God. dog freaks out. <laughs> Hi. He tries to bite it. Hi. Oh. I like Hi. 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 How are you doing? Hi. Hi. I'm good, thanks. Hi. Yeah. So. So. I want to play. I want to play a shark person in someone's game right now, and just be off camera with this underneath, like a hood. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, hey! I said we like kill him. Hold on, let me roll my dice. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I got a five. What'd you roll? Oh. Five. Uh... For persuasion. Mm. You add plus ten though, because you're a shark. So I, I mean, think I'm a shark. Very persuasion. <laughs> That's what very I was rolling. Persuasion. I was rolling to see if he would, you know, you know what I, you know what I was asking for. <laughs> Look into my eyes. I. I I I. Because I there was a ten dollar shark hand puppet while we were on vacation, and I was like. I was like, I was standing there with Christine and Robin, and Christine just found like a big hat that she wanted, and like the hat was great. The hat, the hat, the hat great. is great and remains mm. great. But I was like, should I? Yes. Should yeah. I? It's ten dollars. Do I? Yes. Do Cracks I? knuckles. Yes. 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 And then it turned into like this. This shark has some emotional issues, as it turns <laughs> out. Yes. He He's oh. a very dirty shark. Oh, uh, I blame Caitlin. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin deep throat. I, I don't. I don't. I don't tell. I don't kiss and tell. Is the okay. shark submersible? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. But I believe I'm no. what your people call a power top. Um. Kinky I don't think anyone shark says that. do 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 kinky. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, it was a fun big, it was a fun trap. Um, oh, that was good. It was a fun trap. <laughs> uh, all right. We all introduced right. some people to some phrases they weren't previously familiar with. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was very good. Yep. Submersible. Oh, all right, so folks, we're yeah, gonna be hopping exactly. back into game. Uh, oh, so uh, we've been away for a little while. I wanted to say thank you very much for uh, for supporting us and for being here with Extra Life and. Just in general, like being amazing. Uh, Dorktales is the best audience on the internet, and I will fight anybody who says otherwise. Um, mm -hmm. And thankfully, most of the other larger fan bases, like Crit Roll, Adventure Zone, um, they'll fight themselves. So I don't even have to fight them. It's great. <laughs> Seriously, go into the like the Twitch stream of uh, uh, of any Critical Role game. You just don't even have to fight. It's just spammed emotes and and people getting banned. It's great. Um, Thankfully, we've got uh, a lovely crew here. Um, I also wanted to say that our schedule is a little... Oh, I, I did want to say real quick. Our schedule is a little mixed up this month because of the flood. Because uh, life got weird. Uh, so like one of, uh, if you're on our Discord, you know that one of our cast members' houses flooded. Um, they're fine. Most of their stuff is fine. And they just renewed their insurance like a month before, like including flood insurance. So like, they're great. Um, I'm actually helping them move a bunch of stuff tomorrow. Uh, but that means that uh, a couple of games are in flux. Uh, Mage is going to be off the schedule for a few weeks while we figure out when that can be done. And um, uh, the first game of Vampire is likely on the 2nd instead of the 25th um, because of a conflicting event. Uh, because, hey, scheduling is uh, my favorite thing. One might say it's akin to hurting cats. Oh, I wish I wish it was cats. You know, it's akin to hurting rabbits. Rabbits are the worst. Oh, cats oh. face. <laughs> cats agree. Yeah, she hurting is. cat is pretty easy. You're just like a hey, cat. I need you to do a thing. Okay. But it's on. It's not on a pizza delivery night. Hmm. It's not. So it's good. It's fine. We're fine. Good. It's pretty. It's usually pretty easy. Mm. Fair enough. It involves dice and sometimes wigs. Can I just point out, Kat, every time I see your big, like, your big dipper, like, hair clip, I just love it. Every time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree. I agree. Every freaking time. Every time. Well, like, I thought I saw it in, like, Ardine or whatever. And I'm like, oh my god, it's so very... Very That's what? That's awesome. Right. Right. Um, so, also... It. Uh, a bunch of our Kickstarters are finally going to come in. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so, Christine, um, and actually, Robin, you went in on this as well. Our our tumblers should be on their way soon. 
Ooh. Yeah, our big our big Ooh. bougie cups, uh, which are like all Dungeons and Dragons themed. And then, uh, oh, reminder that the uh, the Lindorm dice Kickstarter has probably ended, but y'all can still join in with a group order if you want more dice, because I always do, and I like Lindorm; they're nice people. And I think that's all I have to say. Anybody else? My Stargate five E mm. came in. Are you gonna run I'm, it? I appreciate you for I'm running this game. Really like to. You don't appreciate nothing. Well, I've successfully completed my first do. work of my new okay. job, or first week of my new job. I'm kidding, but oh yeah, I'm, congrats. I'm kidding. Oh, congrats. Congrats. Yeah, congrats. Also, congratulations, Christine. I know you've been very tired. Uh, did we back the scented uh, dice? No, but we got like constantly harassed about it. I don't remember. Scent, I don't. I that. don't like the idea of the scented dice because I feel like that feels be, weird. It feels weird. I, not I backed like... Uncle Lucky's discount <sighs> dice, which were dice made of trash. Oh, that's so cool. ba- yeah, it's basically um, post-consumer just, dice. Because like, there's the, the dice black. that you can, the edible like sugar like dice, and then you have scented dice, and I'm just like, someone's gonna get these confused and break a tooth. Probably Bear Natasha. Tooth? Natasha would eat one of the dice if she ever got one. She would she absolutely like, put it in so her good, mouth and at it's least. Like cute and pretty and something. And then she choke. would definitely try to put it in her mouth, and then it would and be awful. Mate pot <gasps> don't, you, don't you put it in your mouth? I'm sorry, cat. I'm just spitting, spouting truths about your sister. <laughs> I agree sorry. wholeheartedly. <laughs> <laughs> all right well with that i think it's time to head back into game all right we're gonna transition back in and uh let's do some dungeons and dragons we've got about another 45 minutes a game probably uh Sounds for this good. episode because yeah. i am very exhausted and next episode is gonna be mm-hmm. much longer so everybody carb up mm. all right crack your necks flex your pecs hydrate Just oh, yeah, hydrate yeah yeah that's a good point I got does it count of hydrating if it's a cherry coke Yes. Cool. Sure. Then I did it. Any liquid. A- you heard me. I Any heard liquid. I actually spent my hydrate. <laughs> someone, someone, uh, someone clip that. Uh, all right. Uh, and with that, let's head back. Cherry Coke has water. Yeah, it took it by force at gunpoint. No, that's probably my Nespresso coffee. Mm, that's fair. Mm-hmm. I had a Starbucks coffee for the first time the other day. They gave me a free cup yesterday. Hmm. They're like, I heard about that. I missed one of the birthday coffee. Was like, they're doing truck. this thing, oh, and I was like, I'm coffee. at work. Like, I'm to go. <laughs> I forgot about no. it completely. Like, I was like thinking about it on <laughs> on Tuesday, and I was like, I'm gonna go do the thing. I'm so and mad they don't give you a credit for that anymore. I made it to Thursday, yeah. and I was like, I fucked up, fam. I fucked up. I was planning for this. I fucked up. All right. Speaking of fucking up, I walked up, across the street, but I didn't. Move. Do you have a Starbucks right across the street from your apartment? Oh no, no. From the hospital. I was at work. Oh. In the hospital. Uh, you're so close to. Co- I don't know what I was gonna say. I was gonna say you're so. I don't know. Hospitaled. Don't stand so close to me. Actually, there's just one down from my apartment, though. <laughs> so- I mean, you live in Vancouver. There's coffee everywhere. Yeah, there's everything at six and six, but yeah. Six and six. Six and six. Six six six. The thing. The thing. Anyway, no. All right, I don't know. Well, you. tell me, tell you. me about it when I'm older. <laughs> tell you about it later. Tell you about it later. All right, uh, all right. Let's head back to the game in three, two. Welcome back to the reign of Emerys here on Dork Tales. Rain begins to fall outside, blanketing the Belmont estate with the staccato rhythm of the weeping heavens. Katya, a green dragonborn, sworn as an orphan to House Belmont, uh, much like Leiden was in her early years, is um, your only, the only person in the house that knows you're here. After, um, after a moment of reintroduction and, and uh, confirming that, uh, you know, that you're all right, that you don't need anything immediately, uh, and constantly repeating, like, do you need, do you need any, um, I, I want to double check, Leiden, uh, so this character is one that you've, you've created, uh, Amy, does she have an accent mm-hmm. of any kind, or is it more or less just like I've been playing it? Does mm-hmm. she have a slightly, or did you, ha- did you want her to be like an Irish check. dragon girl? I had written this down at some point, I know, 
Okay. But, uh... Green Dragonborn, quicken to House Belmont is the note that I have. Katia, Green Dragonborn. I have no other notes about her. Okay. Maybe I sent you a message about her, but I don't have anything, so... I think what you've been doing is fine. All right. Yeah. Are you sure you don't need anything to drink or eat or anything like that? I could bring you scones. Actually, could you get me one of my like more discreet cloaks? I'm sure I've got some left in the room. If you have your entire wardrobe there, um, lady asks that it be cycled out on a regular basis to maintain freshness. Um, I'll bring you a change of clothes. Is your if I may, is your friend all right? Looking around the room, you now get a look at exactly what you look like. Each of you is dressed in the same clothing that you entered the white door wearing. With the exception of anyone who is attuned to armor. Specifically, magical of its own nature armor. Thank goodness because Ivy would be naked again! You would be naked again. You also uh, have a pair of charred bone wings jutting out of your spine. Well, jutting out of your shoulder blades, I should say. And uh, so as Ivy is laying on the ground or kind of situating herself inside of this reading room, uh, it is the second study of the house. This is the children's study where Claudette spent most of her childhood playing and reading. More of a more of a playroom than anything else. Um just full of books and nerd stuff. Uh, and all of you still will bear any damage or any uh, any blood markings, uh, viscera, burn scars, anything like that from, from this. So you probably look like a little bit of hell. Uh, however, um, as you are sitting there, um, Talfrin, your hand feels slightly tingly, like you f fell asleep on it. And you will see that there is a single line of, well, dried blood along your wrist. Oh, thank you so much for the subsole. Um, where it looks like something scraped you. And in the center of your palm is the glowing garnet that was once in the center of Yitri's head. And uh, as you're all looking around between Ivy and her horrible skeleton back uh, and the garnet, um, I think that there is a uh, definitely a, a sense of dread that kind of emanates or a sense of a sense of um, kind of maudlin. Um, and Aim, you had a question. Um, yeah, so I was just trying to figure out what the layout of this... So this is a the study that Claudette grew up in? Yes. So is this part of like a suite of rooms, like with her bedroom? That Are they are they connected? Or is there like a corridor in between? Or uh, So this has... Uh, this is a small um, toilet chamber off from it. Okay. Uh, besides that, it connects to the main corridor. This is on the second floor of the house on the eastern wing. Uh, so near the children's rooms. The parents lived in the okay. west wing. Ivy. Okay. Is there a looking glass in the room? A uh, looking glass? Yes, there absolutely is. Mm -hmm. uh, Ivy's going to take a look at it and uh, first off, take a look at herself for the first time. Probably she's seen since before she went into the white gate or the black gate. Um, but she's she's going to be really looking for uh, if she still looks like she has the, the black star plague on her. I'm guessing uh, yes, but she's curious because I was debated. Can you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. uh, can you make me a... Uh... Well, actually don't worry about making me anything because you took a feat based off of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so unless Robin the player wants to shed that feat... No. Uh, cool. Well, then you're still infected. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. As you look, you will see the trailing necrotic energy from the corner of your mouth all the way creeping down the side of your jawline. The skin there in a large triangular patch like the ribbon trailing off a kite has turned gray. 
as if the very color from your flesh has been siphoned away. It's reaching toward your heart with small tendrils of black rivers seeking the ocean of your heart. Well, um, I'll go get you a change of clothes then. Um, yes, thank you. Um, but no scones. Um, you know what? Yes to the scones. Please. Thank you. And, um, it's good to see you again. Is the tall one single? She says, leaning in and giving you another quick hug, Leiden. Um. Or the short one. Yes? The uh, dragonborn will turn, and with her so. glittering, uh, almost kind of like, her, her scales are green, but kind of in that way that copper oxidizes. Like, they're slightly shiny green, and she'll just smile and go, Hur. with big, like, big chompers down at Vary. That is, what would you say that Catch's charisma modifier is? Plus one? Minus six? What do we got? Yeah. Minus six? <laughs> Plus two. I think she's really sweet. Okay, so she got a 16. she's really charming in her own way. Her. Okay, will look up and give her a little, uh, a little wink. <laughs> little, turns a little brown across here. And, uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll scuttle out of the room. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so... Bigger question, why are we in your house? How, how did we go from there to a to? Why do you have a tomb in the middle of this room? You actually think that it was just an old marble cupboard. Now that you're cupboard. on the outside of it, but yeah. So, oh, flood it, fair. Flood it. Oh, okay. Um, Magic is weird. That is very true. This is yeah, why yeah. all my stuff is physical. Just right. to understand it, it's science. Well, I have should... a feeling we should probably leave soon. Probably who knows the best. What my uncle has done. No, I agree. What was our first plan of action then? Well, from what we can tell from in the time skip, my brother was potentially alive. Christine? Yes, now, so he was also over the other side, right? So past the capital, if I recall correctly? Question mark. I don't know because as far as we were aware, he was dead. Right. I mean, couldn't so you send who him knows a where they may have moved him to? True. That was one of my thoughts. Captured yes. Him. Yes. Magic. Magic it up. Use I, use the magics. What happened to Yitri? He was not able to make it alive, but did she he get something of him? To show up the gem. Yes. He was able to give me his gem before he died. Now, are you holding it physically? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. It's in his palm. He's, cool. like, showing um, it. We, can we... Leiden's looking around the room. It, like, I can send the message, try to get in touch with your brother, but... if we Can we take an hour to try and do something about that? That's probably a good thing. I'd be in favor. Did you do something about what? Um, Leiden's hoping she can use Ray's dead. She's hoping. She doesn't know. You you would know that Ray's dead does not function like that. You don't have a body. Okay. Oh, I thought it needed. Okay. 
He needs a full piece. So Ray's dead doesn't bring body parts back. <sighs> I think it's only resurrection yeah, that you can use a piece of them. Yeah, okay. It's full resurrection. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I misunderstood. I just read that part. Um, so that gem Listen. is incredibly valuable, though. Anybody who has Arcana can make me a roll about that. I would love to. I, me too. Okay. I Here. will do that since I'm looking at it. I don't have Arcana. Oh, I have no that's idea. That's an awful roll. Uh, that's going to be 28. Uh, 28. 22. Jesus Christ. So that's a four. Oh my god, Legion. <laughs> a four? Four. I thought you were good at this. Uh, no, it is, I am not proficient in Arcana. It oh, is a garnet okay. the size of a, the size of like a baseball. Oh, I don't have a gem that big around me. Uh, well, we'll say it's a little small. Actually, you know what? So Yee Tree was about the size of like a small mountain lion. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah, I would say it's about the size of like a lemon. Hey, there's a lemon behind that garnet. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, who had uh, higher than a 15? I had 28. 28? Yeah, you'll get 20, special. 25. When, uh, 25? 22. Holy crap. Okay, so all of you are going to get some super special stuff about this. Um, Carbuncle's Garnet is a gem with three charges. When you cast a spell uh, using this Garnet uh, that deals damage or requires you to roll... Uh, dice as part of the effect, such as sleep, you can spend one charge to uh, upcast the spell by a level. Um, yeah. Oh, also you add plus one to the total result. Um, you can do this three times before the gem turns to dust, basically. It, it helps empower spells. Um, however, uh, you all rolled above 20, so that's ridiculous. Uh, you also know that this type of magical material is also particularly useful um, in certain types of, um, well, certain type of ritual magic. Uh, for example, Claudette and uh, Talfrin both bear marks made from ink created by ground up. Um, well, magical creatures. Particularly things like the Carbuncle's Garnet are fantastic, fantastic things to add uh, into um, uh, control brands. Fantastic conductor of magical energy. Hmm. So that is what you'll know right there. That's gross. Yeah, might do more stuff. Um, with your 28, Very, you'll know that um, this probably could have additional effects uh, when used for something like that. Because such like on a, a minute amount of that material is used in order to create the tattoo ink. Um, that having a full one uh, could have unpredictable and interesting results if uh, used in um, in conjunction with the the control brand system. Uh, so you might not want to use that with the branding. Or you might. It might blow everything up. It might be good. I had no intention of using it at all, if you're talking to me. I have no idea what it's for. It's if... incredibly magical. They're very good at conducting magic. Brands are made from them. I wonder if we could use it to cancel out your brand. I see. Can we Maybe add to use it? a tiny to little bit of stuff it? like that to Don't make the ink it. for the brands. Using a full, I mean, we could build the bomb, probably. Maybe? What? I mean, no. We don't want to. I feel like that would be well, a human bomb. And I feel like I wouldn't be very impressed I'm, with being I, used as a human bomb. No, not at all. But that is a potential side effect. I mean, if all our chips are down. Well, the, the, we'll talk the, about the this pro later. The problem is, is it's, it'd be very unpredictable. I so much that it makes me nervous. Yes. Oh, if it makes you nervous, yes, perhaps we shouldn't do that then. Uh, Robin. Um, could 
Would uh, I'm trying to figure out if Ivy would know and Slash could make uh, some sort of like intelligence check. Uh, if altering the brand with more ground up tattoo magic would be something that could potentially cancel out Talfren's command sigil, Mark. You can make me an uh, make me uh, an intelligence arcana roll, please. Okay. Oh, that's going to be pretty good. Pretty good. That's going to be a 22. Um, you think at the very least, like, him hanging on to that might disrupt, might disrupt the connection? Mm. Who knows what it could do? Honestly, like, keeping it on him might be very beneficial. Talfrin, I think you should hold on to that. It has a powerful uh, conduction... It might potentially conflict and interact with the the signals that a command mark might or brand might have on you. I think if we're going to the capital and fighting, they will probably have mages that can have um, a effect on you. I think maybe potentially having you not be able to be controlled would be potentially beneficial. And I right. Make a con save for me. Okay. Noted. I will, I will keep it on me, but if anyone would just to use it, then just let me know and I, of course you can use it. Are you okay? A thin trail of black blood connects your fingers and your lips. We should probably get this sorted out sooner rather than later, right? Yeah. Yes, let's, uh, let us do that. We don't want that to get any worse. There's a knock at the door. She'll hurriedly like I'll... wipe her hand and I'll... mouth and try and I'll grab it. Leedon's gonna kind of back away to be out of the line of sight of the door. You and Leedon's gonna go answer the door. You smell scones. <laughs> she's not gonna open it the full way. She's just gonna open a crack and be like, to check and make sure. Uh, so you open the door and there's a plate of scones as well as a bunch of like draped clothing uh, in Katya's hand. Can you make me a uh, uh, a perception check, real please? <laughs> perception, huh? Mm-hmm. That is a 19. Sounds good. Uh, so Katya stands there with kind of a, a look on her face like, ha ha, ha ha twitch, twitch. I'm What's sorry. Going? What happened? And what as you glance up, you'll see that standing directly behind her is Crispin Belmont. Lord Belmont! big smile on Leiden's face and she's still keeping the door slightly closed so that it's not clear being loudly like doing the loud declare so that hopefully everyone in the room hears it and gets the memo I brought tea he says Is holding there like... up a tray oh yourself what? you brought it tea <laughs> Claudette's Claudette. gonna go up pull lead another way open the door and <laughs> in now Gonna just grab Did my the own skull daughter just boss me around? Yes, in now before mother hears you. <laughs> Fair enough. And he'll say and step through the door. <laughs> Is there anywhere to hide, hide in this study? Yeah. There are plenty of places to hide. Um, so I would like to hide. <laughs> the door is going to be slammed, and Cat is going to be standing in the hallway going. Um. I just. Uh, do you open the door and grab her? Yeah, oh yeah, no, like, when <laughs> let them in and is gonna, like, grab Katya by the, like, she relieved her of the scones and then grabbed the, like, her by the arm and yanks her in and closes the door behind all of them. Strawberries and cream. Strawberries and cream scones. Barry will wander, right, w wander straight up and just take one of the scones. Now, the room that you're in is about a 40 by 30 uh, rectangle. 
It uh, has a number of places for children to curl up in nooks along the window sills and um, a dangling chandelier in the center of the room, just too tall for any child below the age of 12 to climb up and jump onto. They learned that the hard way with your brother and um, had it raised. Not that Claudette similarly. didn't try. Yes, but he had a couple of years on you and a few inches of height. Um, the fireplace is caged in and uh, unlit. Yes, Amy. Oh, just maybe they learned that with the brother, but then Leiden showed up, so Claudette had a footstool. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. That's a good point I hadn't considered. Claudette just did it with more style and dexterity. You can see places where like the, the rungs of the chandelier are bent from just the weight of like a you know a 10 year old girl your father strides in wearing um a pair of uh of dark breeches as well as um uh, some some thigh high boots no thigh high so knee high well knee high boots we'll say thigh high boots he's not walking the streets looking for looking for some love um but uh dressed fairly casually like he had just been um, relaxing, kind of a um, definitely like a, a military style um, f- cross chest fat, fastened uh, fastened shirt, uh, kind of rolled up around the arms with um, uh, with a bit of a waistcoat open, kind of casually. He looks a little disheveled and tired, and you can see that he has ink stains all over his fingertips. So. You're, um, back. It's good to have you. I was wondering when, um, what was the name of that group that the Uh, uncle's part of, that the father was part of? I believe. Uh, you didn't write it down? I can't find it in my notes. It's cool. there it's the somewhere. Or- the Order of the Fallen Sky. Fallen Sky. Uh, any? Does anybody have a passive insight uh, of 15 or higher? Yes. Cool. No. Uh, he is tired. He, um, you have never seen bags under his eyes to this degree. And uh, he is anxious and nervous and definitely acting a bit strange um he's an incredibly warm man and having him be this kind of aloof not normal it's good good to have you back so um who are your friends? Um, well, several people I met from on the travels. Um, Hi, I'm Barry. Sorry we broke your marble desk thing. I mean, that was a teleportation gone wrong. It, we appeared inside of it. I was curious why you had a tomb in the middle of your room, but it doesn't look like so much of a tomb from out here. Oh, the tomb's downstairs. Oh, it's okay. fine. Yeah, you, you avoided the tombs, Barry. Fair. Very. Nice to meet you. Veritrix Solstar, technically. Is that a common halfling name? No. Interesting. I've uh, I've met a Solstar before. Uh, hard workers. A lot of you. Very. <laughs> Very, indeed. Um, then, uh... I know who you are he says looking directly at Talfrin Talfrin Pridery sir your poster's plastered over most of the cities sure it is sir and who are you he says looking directly at Ivy Does it matter? I suppose not. How can I help? How 
much are you working with Uncle still? I'm not. Good. Excellent. I... Have you heard yet about the fortress? Maxine? Yes. Then you know the... The lighthouse that could have seen the massing was conveniently damaged when Akario visited a week before. I know about the fallen sky. I know about your suspicions about uncle and our niece, our cousin. Mm -hmm. We found your journal. And... We managed to activate the door left behind. Also, Akario tried to kill us. Multiple times. Actually, yes. Cousin has tried yeah. to kill me multiple times now. Yeah. He's... I don't... Good. He's I believe he's making a run anymore. for the Empire. Like, like, he sucks. Uncle always was ambitious. He's a little unhinged. I would say. I don't know. I am a little unhinged. Lucia will try he's to... completely toast. Mary, the prince. The empress will conveniently die that night. And hell will descend. Literally. I'd like to and avoid that. I think and as far should... as I'm aware, Maxine is not dead. Yes, no. not yet. That I can say for certain. Maxine's not dead. I have received a report that he's being held inside of one of the dungeons in the capital. So we need to get to the cap capital then, basically. Oh, well, we need to do that. We need anyway, to go back then. to the capital. Why is he being held in the dungeon? Because he they're gonna make him one of those things. <sighs> okay, this is the one we so that they can prevent the, him marrying the, the princess, obviously. So that they can That's destroy it. the world. You know, everyday normal stuff that we deal with. I think there are some things about this that I might be missing. Um. Oh, we went to the future. Well, we the door yeah. you left behind, Father, in the temple. Yeah. When you I, we went the black door. We went to the future. Um. And you, wait, you managed to? You said you opened it. I. Well, that was Leiden. Opened it. Yeah. It needed something radiant. We. I know. Where. I come from. Okay. And I'm gonna have a scone. Do you want any tea? Um, I haven't had tea in. And we know where Lucia. I need to get changed. I am drenched in blood still. Comes from. Okay. Well, I think that this is the time. It's Metrovian. Um, the tea is Metrovian. It has twice the caffeine of normal. It varies already. With all of this. <laughs> Claudette would like to insight check, like, how her father is reacting. Please, go ahead. Eden's also watching very closely and doing something similar. Oh, yeah. Oh. Ivy does not trust anyone. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20? Cool. Yeah. Um, you, he is very aloof. Uh, you are having trouble pinning it down specifically. Um, but you know that he, he's definitely, what you will gather is that he's playing his cards close to his chest at the moment. He's trying to absorb information before he provides any, and he's not really showing any cracks. Um, you haven't really seen this part of your father before, actually. The part that used to be, uh, apparently, an intelligence agent. Mm -hmm. And you just see, like, this mask of control just spread over his exhausted features. I got it. 21, so probably the same. 20, cool. I got a 29. Oof, so. shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no way I can beat that. He, it's just not possible. He's a good spy. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So you went to the future and saw the world end. Yeah. Basically. Eventually. And when yes. they came back, they're reaching When does it end? Deep. In at, four, three or four days? Uh, days? Well, they get married in three days for, I think, is when the world ends. Mm, yeah. 
they unleash whatever they're tapping into in the crucible. Well, it ends a couple days after that. We were there the for a couple energy. days. So. Have you heard of Black Star Plague? You will. Hopefully not, but you probably will. All right. Yes. Kadia, can you do me a favor? Uh, yes, my lord. Um, I need you to listen very closely. I need you to... You see, like, mystic energy swirl around his fingers for a moment, and a little bit of mist will just kind of, like, reach out of his hand and, like, just boop Katya right between the eyes, and you're going to watch her pupils just constrict and then widen to the point that they are the entire eye. You dropped off tea, and that's it. You didn't hear anything, and you decided to call an early night, because you were feeling a little tummy sick. You'll feel good about this in the morning. And she'll just repeat that for And I felt a little tummy sick, so I went to bed. I feel good about this in the morning. Well, I'm off to bed. Good night, everyone, she says, and just walks out of the room in a daze. You forgot to teach me that. I Neither. forgot she was here. What do you want to know? What do you need to know? How do we stop this? I want my brother back. I do not want the world to be descended into some demonic blood covered gore fest. I like being alive. That too. I know of the Black Star. Um, our historical records are not complete. Do you say you know of the Fallen Star? Pardon me, of the, the Order of the Fallen Sky? Mm-hmm. What do you know? Whatever. <laughs> I'm trying to remember it all now. It's been I, don't, I think you just learned the name. I don't think you learned anything else. Um, yeah, no, basically I don't think just said like it was an intelligence organization that kind of determined the empire and how it would go and what would happen in instances by killing or mm -hmm. manipulating behind the scenes everything. So you you know, and that her uncle is part of it. You know a name, and that's oh, so that's so that's what you know. Okay. Besides the part that uncle is where I'm trying to get us killed. Your uncle hasn't been himself for quite a while. Ever since Lucia? More or less. I think it came before that. But honestly, he hasn't been the same since... Um, you know, since your aunt passed. Mm. Marcia was all that held him together. All right. The Order of the Fallen Sky is the oldest society in all of Emery's. They were originally record keepers that brought with them the history when we arrived here. And slowly over time, they, well, took more of a guiding stance to make sure that we stayed true to our past and our future. A lot was lost when we came here, but um, Black Star was mentioned. In many of the historical records. Um, perhaps it'd be easier if you told me what you need to know. If you ask me questions. There's a lot of information I have, and I don't think we have as much time as we'd hope.
Well, if Maxine's being held in the capital, then there's... We only really have one ally there, then, if they're deliberately holding somebody for no reason. Hmm. We need to stop the marriage. Well, it was once Lucia was sworn in that everything happened. As the, the coronation, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Yes. We? It would be. It's... The, um, it's the altar. Then. The stone of Araya. It's the the bloodline of Emrys's royal house goes back to the founding of the nation, thousands of years. It's the bloodline carries inside of it certain markers that allow it to utilize um, the stone's properties. The stone itself is alive. It's one of the oldest pieces of Magitech that we possess. It's for lack of a better word Long time ago, the Amrisians sailed to this world. And the Stone of Araya was our masthead. Our steering wheel. And, uh, Could she have... Hmm? I was just going to wonder if she could have to release the black star would she have had to draw on its power once she was crowned that seems like a pretty good a pretty good idea actually so as soon as destroy she... it well if someone else was crowned before she had the chance. Uh, enough of the royal blood flows through uh, several families. Honestly, once the noble families of Emrys all have enough that once they are um, joined, they are able to access its power. Their name is added to to, uh, to the host of names inside of it. The spirits of the ancients, and they have access to it. They can control it. The crucible is controlled by it directly. As are a number of other similar devices around Emrys. What? Leiden's looking at Claudette, like, directly. So we should get Claudette in charge. Is there enough Belmont blood that if we got there, we could you would have pull? There are only a few ways that would work. Mm -hmm. There would have to be no direct air. And if I'm not mistaken, Cassion, oh, pardon me, that's not his first name. I would not use that. One moment while I flip to my, God, I have a lot of notes for this game. So many notes. So many notes, so many NPCs. One second. Nope, 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 nope. God damn it. 
Game four. No, it's game one. There we go. I know that Ryan Centadella and Ad Siegel Cassian are both still... Well, they should still be alive. If they were not... In theory, probably could. I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, especially after we just, um... Just married rescued. the prince. <laughs> Are you seriously suggesting that my daughter be married off? He, they like each other. They do. They do? They do. They do! Big time. I met him twice! And the energy was palpable! Uh, to, daughter, it's to be true. fair, I met your mother once before we were married. See, but you twice. already have twice and the leg up. I'm not gonna get married, so... Twice, technically. You gotta. And I mean, we Good all know peace. that I'm in no position to run a country. I mean, Maxime's already supposed to marry the princess, and he's right there. But we don't know if the princess is still alive. True. We don't know where the princess is. That's why you should marry the prince. Or the princess, but, if we find her, if you could marry her. Or the, yeah, or the princess. Up to you. Couldn't Lucia just right be... Couldn't they still have this ceremony and write her name on. Not if you got there first. I'm not saying this is a good option, and I'm very much against it. Well, why don't we but destroy the... it? Destroy it? What would that do to F No. Destroy it or release the end of the world. Kelly, can I roll to see how, you know, what we would have to do to destroy it and what effects oh, that might boy. have? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, give me a give me an Arcana with disadvantage on that one, because this is just like a... Right. Um, I mean, if you fail, it's going to be an... Uh, I don't think we can, is, is the fail. Oh, it's definitely treason. It's definitely treason. Roll oh, Arcana yeah, to determine sure. how much treason. Roll Arcana to determine how much treason. treason? All right. Ivy's mm. fucked at this point. She doesn't Yeah, Telfin doesn't care. Well, How much treason can I roll? I got a 15 for treason. Mm. Got a 15 for treason? I'm gonna roll my for treason. My low one is 22. Your low one is 22? Oh god. Uh, basically, you'd have 26. to, like, magic nuke it. I am not giving you a magical nuke. I'm just gonna <laughs> drop, drop that in there real uh. quick. Do not give your players a magical nuke. They uh, build a bomb! To destroy, <laughs> so, to destroy that, it would take, like, basically an act of god. To destroy a relic like that like this is like the stone of area is basically like like it is a beyond legendary item like a 20th like, level magical item it, it basically is like hey do you want the sword of arcaris like the sword you know the one that blinded yeominger yeah mm -hmm. that thing okay yeah and that thing hasn't been seen in at least a generation so like pfft, maybe two generations mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I don't think we can destroy it. Um, of course we can't destroy it. I mean, it'd be interesting, but no, it wouldn't. I physically don't think we'd be able to. I don't know how you're going to be able to get into the city. Well, I mean, I'm sure that we can manage. There are a lot of tunnels going all over the place and under there it's a coronation yeah there's guards everywhere and yeah. you would need one hell of a distraction i i think we can manage that i think we can manage that Eden looks is lo looking over at talfrin i the crucible is on the way yeah yes that as well i actually i was going to mention it that. could there be not on the way anymore could have a slave uprising yes that would be a distraction I could also go try Light and speak with my my dear mother. And who would that, that be? It's by just... speak you mean kill. Oh, we that could would be useful. I, I would try, but I could definitely try and get her attention. I, I mean, one way of preventing Lucia from taking over the place is would literally be to kill her. Well... We have so many options, and none of them are good. Oh, oh, oh! I mean, we, there are some also, that are better than others. Lead in, lead in, lead in, lead in. Could you sending the pirate lady? 
Wendy? Uh. You might like to help. Maybe. Oh, she was really good. We did meet pirates, mm. and yeah, we, we saved did. crooks from them. We did. We also. I had we a met dragons on that trip. We did. Actual dragons. I'm sure they could do something. Wasn't oh. there that magical? What about Zeet? Zeet. Zeet. I mean, Zeet's badass. Zeet's <laughs> badass. I could. We have so many people that we could call who would all have to topple government. Send in them all. Mm, yeah. Yes. You know them well enough to do that. I think. Get mm-hmm. everybody involved in toppling the Eurasian government because this place what is. What was that? Burton think... dumpster fire. Well, maybe not in I don't... front of. No, we're just. We're not <clears throat> toppling the government. Thank we're you. stopping the apocalypse. By toppling the government in our favor. No. It's... We're not toppling the government. We are creating a distraction and putting a better you know person what? in charge of the government. You know what? If it makes you feel like better, you can think about it that way. I will. Okay. Well, I, I was meaning the prince, but he seemed pretty reasonable. But, Lodette, Lodette. What? I could do a sending to the prince. Warn him to stay away from Lucia. That's, I'm, that may be difficult inside that. of the capital. Oh. It won't reach? Or it will be intercepted. Shit, okay. You have to be careful about sending inside of the reach of uh, any of the Imperial Magi. Well, maybe we can send it in code. <laughs> Potentially, if you had a secret phrase that only he would understand. Leden looks at Claudette. Do you have any ideas? Something that the two of you spoke about. I talked with him once and, like, danced with him once at a ball. I mean, did you say anything interesting together at the ball? I don't generally talk when you're dancing a lot. You- he said something! I was watching. Right before you toss me into the... Frickin... (laughs) Oh, I remember that night! I got splashed by some asshole in a carriage! Well, that sucks. And then I met a one-horned tiefling. You met right. V. Do you well, understand what's gone... going on here? He says to tell him. I'm impaled with No, no, not I at just... all. It's it's fine. I'm just rolling with it. That's it's what I do. Yeah, I was at the base of a building that she that she scaled, and I got almost got impaled by a knife. I just <laughs> let it happen. That was me. I smashed it out of her hand. Oh, th- thanks. Well, I guess. I'm pretty sure oh. I do have sending. I mean, I vote we call in the dragons. They're not going to come. They might come. I don't think they're going to come because they were with that lady that gave me the cloak and she was not going to come. She was particularly leaving. So, because she saw this coming. Yes. So that means so. that you'd have to... Um... So what's the plan then? You're going to try to interrupt a wedding by going to the crucible and doing what? F- freeing the... Yes. Well, that was my plan. Well, I think it's a good do plan. Do you think... I'll be straight up with you now that we're laying everything on the table. To override or overload the slave brands. You'd need a particularly dangerous amount of chaotic energy to do that. I mean, we have an entire um, carbuncle garnet. Though it's a good conduit. But you would. a lot of energy at the crucible. You would need to tap into the wild to do that. I think there's a lot of chaotic energy in my veins. Yes. Who are these people you're spending time with? We're good making decision. I met them on the train. And they saved our lives. They were very useful. Times. We're capable people. I haven't died yet. Truly. Leiden. I can attest to that. I, yeah? What's up? If you don't That one's have... died at least once. Twice. <laughs> if you have an extra sending spell, there's someone I need to check on. 
Just if you have it, an extra one at the end. I'll keep All of you, can I get a perception roll? Okay. <laughs> I can sure try. <laughs> oh, that's and natural that's one. Oh, natural. nine. Exception? Awful. Uh, Seven. Oh, I that. <laughs> We're all going to die. Oh. <laughs> 18. Oh, <thank> nice. <laughs> okay. Um. So, did anybody else get above a 15? At 20. At 20, okay. So the two of you are going to notice that the room is going to lighten up through the windows, and the rest of you are going to think, oh, it's just, you know, it's... It's... What lightning. happens? It's lightning. Oh, yeah. Like, it's oh, it's, it's 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 storming outside. Um, however, the rest of you are going... The, those of you who got those two, um, those two scores are going to take a glance and realize that, uh, no, in actuality, that is... Those are flares. Like fireworks illuminate the sky outside casting bright white f relief why are there flares eden's gonna stand up because i think she was probably sitting while she was munching away and she's gonna go over to the window and she's gonna look take a closer look all right um as you head outside you can everyone oh sorry pardon me go ahead oh just everyone just be careful maybe stay down <laughs> The lights illuminate and hang in the sky, casting daylight glow around the Belmont estate. You could hear things in the distance, motion, grinding. And then in the distance, simply a knock at the door now. Husband, are you in there? The door will pitch and open, and potentially to your terror, the Lady Belmont stands in the doorway. A beautiful woman with a very sharp face. She looks around. Amalia Belmont appraises each of you with a sharp diamond-like gaze. Hmm. Spending time with the Riff Raft, dear. She looks over at you as she says that, Claudette. Well, I mean... They've been helpful. Well, isn't this just great? Our son is in prison. And you have brought down the National Guard. On the plus side, I'm trying to save the Empire? As long as there's a plus side. I might have to worry the, marry the Prince. One thing She's at a time, kind of dear. A the army's outside the door. Shall we? Yes. Good. The warding spells are only going to hold for another minute or so. We should probably gather our things. That sounds like a good idea. How long were you monologuing? She shoots her husband a look. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. <laughs> you caught me monologuing. <laughs> I don't know what's going on or what your plan is necessarily, but I know that I don't want you to be here when they kick in that door. Which means that we have to get you out of here. Whatever plan you have, Claudette, I'm trusting you to do the right thing. I'm trying. So everyone on your feet and grab your weapons. It sounds like you have an empire to save. Oh. And did you bring the truffles? And I think I'm going to call game there. <laughs> Well, I was gonna kind of look at Lita and just be like, "Got left in the room, didn't they?" They got left in the room. Yep. Oh, oh no! no! Oh, oh, no. We had them. No. The travel quest. I thought so too. Travel quest. Crap. We had one job. It's all Mario's fault. <laughs> it's all. It's a. You, you, you can't always use that. Five years from now, we're gonna be in a different game, and you're gonna be like, "It's all Akaro's yeah. fault." Akaro. I mean, it might still be Akaro's fault. No, it's still left in the room. Yeah, if it's no. still left in the room, Dirk could have the truffles. Dirk could have the truffles. I mean, true. 
Dirk might have eaten the truffle. Yeah, Dirk has the truffle. At this point, he Dirk probably deserves truffle. it. Honestly, Dirk truffle is the truffle for I. I feel Dirk. like he would. All right, so hey, folks, that is going to be it from us tonight. Slightly shorter game because I don't have. I we need to do the escape scene in one run. But hey, mm -hmm. you learned a few things about this. Anybody have any questions about the Empire or anything? <laughs> no, those of you who've been following our. Yeah, those of you who've been following our other games, I think that like Cat and uh, Amy and Robin know a lot of what's going on because of Shards of Nern. <laughs> to, like, but... yeah, Emery is, is like is a is a space colony. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they the mm -hmm. baddies? Eh, depends. Mm -hmm. Instead of instead of a king, you will have a queen as beautiful as she is, Blade Songy. <laughs> <laughs> Claudette, become evil. I want the Empire to continue to be dickish. No. Amy uh, sent know. me a great thing about oh. potentially, <laughs> potentially, The equivalent of, of Amy shower thoughts kind of thing. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I was just I mean, like, sitting there and I was like, so if Tia and Jorund did get together and had a kid, if it's a boy, yeah. it's going to be named Basil. Mm -hmm. I like Basil. That's a good and name. And if it's, if it's not... Well, maybe there's a maybe Tia has more kids. I I know I know who uh, I know who Zeet's parents are in, in terms of okay. like the cutouts in yeah. my head. I don't have names so for them. I had the, the I had the I, the vibe you were get you were giving out was that Zeet's mom is the descent descendant. So uh, I will say Zeet's mom is a half orc or is part of me is an Orcashian. She's yeah. Orcash. So, yeah, so I don't know, but I was just thinking about that and I was just like, if it's Darund, the kid's name's gonna, one, at least one child is going to be named Basil, if it's a boy. <laughs> well, or if it's it, a girl, I don't care, can it, actually. Can it be Basilla? Basilica? No, Bas well, Basilla. <laughs> ba Bas yeah. Basilla? Nah, I would just go Basil. I just think <laughs> about, you know, like, Basil. what? Herbs are gender neutral. Right? Herbs oh, are Basil gender neutral. Basiliska? Basilisca. Zeta's His not Palpatine's granddaughter. Oh, Zeta's Palpatine's short. grandson. There's a difference. Oh, I get it now. Basil is a good name, but also I get it now because I did watch that. I you watched did watch that episode. Yes. I watched right. that, that one. I was that there That one for episode that. was so freaking funny. It was funny. so Holy fucking shit. funny. So uh, extra points to anybody here who caught my little reference about something in a timeline. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. Robin caught it. Robin was paying attention. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I was like... I saw the face <laughs> and I knew it already. I saw it like maybe I'll I'll face. talk to you about it later. I'll message you after game. Uh, I want to hear. It. All right, so folks, that's gonna be it for us tonight. We'll be back uh, next uh, next week um, on Friday for another episode of the Reign of Emerys, and then we've got about three more episodes left if things go according to plan. If not, hey, when do they ever? So um, we will see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, sorry, long day. Um, love you very much. We're, we will be back on Monday night uh, with Wild Beyond the Witchlight. So I just wanted to quickly thank our Patreon uh, sponsors who make this happen. Uh, so Shelton is responsible for Blackstar. Uh, Dia Mike is responsible for Lease, basically fixing that. Um, and uh, Jade is responsible for someone you'll be meeting in January with a game that replaces this game, uh, which will be fantastic and a lot of fun. So thank you three for being our divine patrons. Thank you so much. Uh, it means a lot uh, to be able to work with your ideas and create something really cool out of them. Uh, not that they're not already cool, but you know, it's fun to remix. Uh, and also thanks to our Prince of the Patreon, Taryn, who is our OG fangirl, and Buddy, thank you so much for being here, man. Like, I really appreciate it. You are fantastic. Uh, thank you all, and uh, you know what? We will see you next time here on Dork Dose. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.